ECW area. In accordance with Rule 49E9 of the Rules of Procedure, I will not put any question on the motion. Debate on motions with no legislative effect to motion debate on balancing the impacts of the tourism industry on the economy and people of Hong Kong. Members who wish to speak in the motion debate will please press the request to speak button. And I'll call upon Honorable Vincent Fang to move and to speak and move the motion. Honorable Vincent Fang. President, I move that the motion is printed on the agenda be passed. Mr President for mainlanders coming to Hong Kong on their individual visa scheme as well as the policy of allowing um, Shenzhen permanent residents to visit Hong Kong on multiple entry permits as well as the activity of carrying um, commodities into the mainland for resale. There is the so-called parallel trading activities. Who should be held responsible? I think it rests with the SARG. Two days ago, the CE carried out, um, uh, criticized that some political members took the lead in criticizing the mainland shoppers. Um, the, in fact, the problem of parallel goods traders have got out of control. The protests against them have also got out of control. I think um, those who took part in such a uh, protests should be um, uh, penalized because they have uh, disturbed uh, the young, the weak, and the old. But then the um, SARG is the prime culprit for not addressing the problem squarely. Generally speaking, for the so-called uh, Reclaim Hong Kong campaign and the so-called uh, anti um, mainland uh, parallel goods traders uh, campaigns. Well, uh, on the one hand, I think they are trying to take it out um, because of their uh, pressure, uh, because uh, they would like to uh, get votes so as to enhance their um, um, uh, their um, reputation um, so as to deal a blow to the SARG. No, I think the government is to be blamed because the government has given rise to the opportunities. The individual visa scheme came as a result in the post-SARS outbreak uh, era. At that time, there was a uh, downturn of the economy. Uh, the tourism industry suffered a lot. Uh, there was no business for the retailers, and therefore the business sector went to uh, the mainland and asked for uh, tourists to be channeled to Hong Kong. And as a result, there was this relaxation of the rules of um, outbound travel. In the past, uh, many of this must come on, a, a, on the basis of a tour. Um, instead of coming in individual uh, capacities. At the time, we thought we could revitalize the economy of Hong Kong by allowing individuals to come to Hong Kong. At that time, uh, Madam Ng Yi, Wu Yi, uh, who was the vice uh, premier, uh, she said that uh, it would not be a problem to relax the restriction, but then it would be difficult to hold it back or to revert it. And she wondered whether Hong Kong got the cap capacity to cope with so many visitors. At that time, we were in a uh, very um, a serious um, state, and so uh, we, we were just promised um, to uh, take whatever is offered. Uh, within six months' time of the commencement of the individual visa scheme, we were uh, able to enter into a recovery. In year 2008, there was the financial crisis, and then um, Hong Kong was also affected as a result of being an individual, uh, as an international financial center. But then the mainland market supported us. And in fact, in April 2009, there was a further effort to rescue Hong Kong. That is, um, we have the scheme to allow uh, Shenzhen permanent residents um, to visit Hong Kong on multiple entry permits. So the two schemes have been propping up the economy of Hong Kong. Our jobs, our income have benefited a lot. Even the um, 
示意是話兩誒 since 誒 zooming offers in July 2012 he told the retail sector that the individual visa scheme、uh, has contributed substantially to the economy of Hong Kong. He said that he would like to ask for more cities to be included in the in the scheme so as to allow more visitors to come to Hong Kong. Round about the new, new year of 2013.、Uh, At that time, we had the turning point. At that time, I objected to the hastily put together uh, baby uh, uh, powdered uh, formula uh, ban. I said that it would only、um, worsen the problem, and everybody would become a parallel goods trader because、um, more commodities will become rare and、uh, hard to get, and then there would be a profit in it. Unfortunately,、uh, I have been、uh, proved to be uh, uh, correct. Now, for parallel goods trading,、um, this is a mode of business such that many young people are able to start their own business. SMEs also benefit by getting this business and survive. Now, today, even if you just、um, resell two、uh, tins of baby、uh, formula or Just two packs of、uh, Yakult milk. As long as you are still within the legal limit, you can、um, make a living. And two years ago, Mr. Lam Kok Hong、um, spoke on their behalf because such、uh, traders、um, spend time and effort、uh, to make a living. On their own, that's much better than relying on the government in the form of getting CSSA payments. Unfortunately, the government didn't、um, do it properly, and as a result, the parallel trade uh, was um, um, promoted in a sense.、Um, and so, in fact,、uh, the traders have to make many trips a day so that.、Uh, As a result,、uh, there was a lot of、uh, nuisance caused to the community of Hong Kong, because the traders have to、um, uh, sort out their commodities on the street. But of course, you may say that、um, I'm wrong to hold such a thought, because、um, our babies are deprived of、uh, formula. What about our neighboring city, Macau? Have they banned?、Um, Have they imposed such a ban? Have they got traders、uh, in parallel、um, uh, goods?、Um, they don't have the same problems because they have got the same.、Uh, they have got it right. This is because they have got a system to make sure that the suppliers must reserve adequate amount of baby formula. For local babies, and then the rest can be、um, exported. I don't know why we should use a、uh, uh, clumsy way to deal with the problem that is、uh, restricting the export.、Um, today we have this very serious tension. I think for those who supported the formula ban,、uh, should take the blame. Now, for the individual visa scheme, it has been launched for 13 years, and then for the escalating number of、uh, million visitors, I think the government has turned a blind eye. We have got relatively more visitors in Hong Kong, and.、Um, And now the government is asking the mainland government to impose some restrictions. I think this is absurd. Now, when you are not having enough business, you ask for more clients, but you don't increase your production lines. You don't increase your manpower. Now you can't cope with the increasing volume of business, and you ask for the orders to be、um, scaled down. Do you think that your clients will have? Uh, confidence in you, whether we are talking about the purchase of a bottle of shampoo or whether we are serving a bowl of barbecued、uh, pork on rice,、uh, it is still a matter of doing business. All the retailers and the eateries do not want to see the individual visa scheme and the multiple entry permit schemes to be、um, re uh, restricted. In fact, more would like to see more cities to be included, so as to arrest the downward trend in the tourism industry and related sectors. 
but then our tourism facilities, our retail uh, outlets, <coughs> as well as our transport infrastructure haven't expanded in line with the increase in the number of visitors. Therefore, the tourism hotspots are rather crowded, and we have got crowdedness in the shopping districts. And um, mainlanders are boycotting Hong Kong. I think this is only um, getting worse. Uh, since New Year, Chinese New Year, We've seen a slowing down of the number of uh, slowing down of the growth of mainland visitors to Hong Kong. If we allow the protests against the mainland visitors to continue, I'm afraid it will have an impact on us, and that's even worse than imposing restrictions on the multiple entry permits. For this motion debate, I've been talking to my sector. They also would like to see reasonable adjustments so as to reduce the impact of the mainland visitors on Hong Kong citizens so that we can steer the tourism industry back to the right track. Now, parallel goods traders are different from mainland tourists. Now, today, I think it's the parallel uh, goods traders as well as the uh, day trippers uh, who uh, pull along their uh, shopping trolleys that have caused the greatest um, um, uh, discontent. So I've come up with a number of suggestions. First of all, for those uh, parallel uh, goods traders, um, they can enjoy free entry for the first trip during a day. For the second um, trip within the same day, um, they should they should be subject to a land departure tax, irrespective of the nationality. Uh, in this way, we can increase the cost of parallel goods trading without jeopardizing the uh, bona fide tourists. And then at the land border, uh, land boundary crossing uh, district, I think we can build a shopping mall so as to divert the main shoppers from um, the rest of the community. Um, near to Rock Ma Chow, understand that there is a plan to have a, um, a shopping mall. I think in addition to that, I think we can further improve the Chongying Street district. I think it can also be expanded so that it can be extended to Shuttle Cock of, uh, Hong, in Hong Kong so that there will be more outlets for shopping. And at the same time, we can uh, promote the development of Shuttle Cock. In this way, there will be more jobs for the citizens of Hong Kong. Certainly, we should talk to the mainland authorities so that the multiple entry permits for Shenzhen residents can be fine-tuned. Currently, uh, for those uh, coming to Hong Kong you know, more than uh, once during a day, they only amounted to 3 to 5 percent. But then if we can make adjustments um, to the uh, scheme, then I'm sure we can reduce the pressure on our transport near the boundary, and we can also uh, in decrease the passenger flow. We should also increase the shopping uh, area, um, floor, I mean the floor area. I think the number of people coming under the individual visit scheme has doubled, but then the um, um, the floor area for shopping has only increased by 10 percent. It has also um, escalated the prices. It has also um, increased the rental. And as a result, the local people find that they are un find that they are under lots of pressure. Moreover, um, if there are people um, arresting um, the visitors, in particular those using violence. Um, then uh, we should take action. Uh, we mustn't allow anybody's uh, safety to be jeopardized, whether they're locals or visitors or shoppers. Um, I've just outlined a number of suggestions among many uh, feasible or uh, viable options. I hope that through today's motion debate, uh, we can come up with uh, reasonable suggestions. And we hope that by making adjustments and refining the, the schemes, we can, as a result of suffering um, short-term labor pain, we can have a sustainable development. Today, we have only got the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. Uh, 
uh, he's the only public officer here. I find it regrettable. This is because um, the motion debate uh, will affect and involve many areas. Tourism, economic development, uh, job creation, boundary and management, law enforcement against the um, uh, uh, violent um, uh, protesters. Though I don't expect a lot um, to be said uh, by the public officers, but then this certainly goes beyond the portfolio of the um, Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. The other day, I wrote to Mr. John Chang, the Financial Secretary, hoping that he would attend today's meeting so as to listen to us. But understand that um, the business opportunity has become a crisis. This is because the SARG would only want to get benefits from it without um, facing the problems squarely. I now propose a question to you, and that is that the motion moved by Honorable Vincent Fang be passed. Eleven members will move amendments to this motion. This council will now proceed to a joint debate on the motion on the eleven amendments. I will call upon members who move the amendments to speak in the following order. Dr. Kong Kaki, Claudia Mo, Gary Fan, Tan Ka Piu, Xin Chong Kai, Chen Chi Chun, Yu Si Wing, Wang Ting Kuang, Fernando Zhang, Andrew Lang, and Regina Yip. But that they may not move amendments at this stage. Dr. Kwok Kaki. Thank you, uh, President. This motion was moved by Mr. Vincent Fang, who represents the retail sector. Mr. Fang mentioned one point which I agreed, that this individual visit scheme has brought a, a serious problem to Hong Kong, and the government hasn't been doing what it should do. In the past Sunday, C. Y. Lang, in his um, home residence, um, staged a feast, uh, criticizing electrical members for um, damaging Hong Kong mainland relationship. C. Y. Lang is called the father of IVS after the SARS in 2003. He asked the uh, mainland authorities. It was trying to ingratiate the mainland authorities, um, and he would have no rather have no immigration control after the handover. So, and as many people who wanted to come can come. So they want. He wanted to ingratiate the central authorities, relax immigration controls. So it's best for him that 1.3 million population in. The mainland can come to Hong Kong. Since April 2009, where multiple entry permits uh, were introduced, there has been a surge in the number of uh, mainland tourists from 1.47 million to 12 million, over 17 times increase. There have been illegal immigrants, um, parallel trading. Um, there are all sorts of mainland Hong Kong conflicts. Recently, of course, we know that people were very angry and they staged demonstrations. And the the source of that was the uh, the CG and the SARG. See, Long Chen should have stepped down. And on February 24, during the MPC and CPPC uh, meetings, he met with the CPG government officials. And before that, he said that he would strive to put a limit to IVS. And he said he knew about the pressure of Hong Kong people. He was trying to put the Chinese leaders on the spot. And ultimately, he didn't achieve anything. And when he returned to Hong Kong, um, he was too ashamed to um, explain. So he was uh, so, sort of passing the buck to the um, the parallel traders and those who are against uh, them. In Chun Mun Shang Shui, the anti-parallel traders groups were targeting the goldsmith shops, groceries, and so on. So who was the culprit? C.Y. Leung was making up all stories, lying, and accusing the scholars like Chen Kimen of misleading the um, students, and so on. These demonstrations, well, let us uh, to think. 
that the, the domestic violence in Si Lang's residence. He said, well, he said that the domestic violence was in fact to protect his daughter. So you could imagine that um, the police, when beating up the um, the anti-parallel trader groups, could uh, be uh, protecting them. Hong Kong is a small area. In 2014, we have 61 million tourists, and I think we've um, over been overstretched in our receive, receiving capacity in terms of our infrastructure, um, buses, uh, trains, and shops were all occupied, in, so to speak, by tourists. Um, in the past, we used to, to see tourists um, crowding in tourist areas, but then nowadays we are seeing that um, local uh, district groups, Tin Mun Yun Long, Northern District, and so on. Um, these are districts where the low, uh, the grassrooters are living and shopping, and also in the Sha Tin District, which is a, an area very much for the middle. Uh, class, I mean, it is also prone to tourist um, um, occupation. So 47 million of them are uh, many tourists, 77 percent, and 2002, 41 percent only. And also 28 million of them are day uh, trippers. So I, I don't know whether we should turn them as uh, tourists. Nev there has been never any tourist uh, city in the world which welcomes day trippers. Um, this 28 million um, tourists will rise to over 30 million this year. Some of them are engaged in parallel trading. They buy daily necessities, food items, and jewelry, which is not affordable by Hong Kong people. Who is the culprit? Perhaps the poisonous um, foods in on the mainland, and also there are corrupt officials on the mainland. Um, they get rich. They buy a uh, luxurious brand of watches. They have to um, launder money and buy properties and so on. And some of the people they uh, couldn't get safe food in Hong Kong. I mean, on the mainland, so they have to snatch up a, a baby formula in Hong Kong. Wang, Huang Guangyao, the grandsons, I mean, they, their parents are also s snatching up a baby formula in Hong Kong. So this is all so very shameful. Even the uh, Minister for Commerce acknowledged that um, uh, products in China are not uh, safe. This is a shame on China. Um, the rental of shops has uh, soared. Um, excessively, and the beneficiaries of this IBS is the property developers who own the shops, and these are the people who have this meal with the Long Chen Ying in his residence. They were treated to a sumptuous meal in Long Chen Ying's residence, and they are asking the grassrooters to tolerate to put up with all these problems and see why Lan would like to treat the rich in his residence. But then there are people out there in the community who, who have to uh, put up with exorbitant rental. I think I need to amend Mr. Vincent Fang's motion, which puts emphasis on the retail sector. Article 22.4 of the Basic Law states that um, procedures have to be um, undertaken before mainlanders can come to Hong Kong. And also Article 154, there is similar um, provision. So this is something that we should do as SARG. Um, but Si Wai Lang has not been doing what he should do. We're talking about multiple entry permits. I think it's not just multiple, it's indefinite um, entries. There is no problem, no matter how many times say, you mainland is visit Hong Kong under that scheme. So I think we should deal with the dire consequences brought about by IBS. 
and we are seeing all sorts of conflicts because of this scheme. And if these conflicts cannot be resolved, and the government um, chooses to turn a blind eye to these problems, I believe that all these conflicts will only um, escalate. We can't be a hospitable city anymore. And some other tourists from, uh, say, the South Asia and other countries will also suffer. We all know that Hong Kong can't cope can't cope with the problems brought about by the multiple entry permits. I think the business sector should be uh, more broad-minded, and he should, uh, they should urge the SARG to resolve the problems brought about by multiple entry permits. My <coughs> amendment has to do with the land uh, departure tax, and also we should uh, um, put a ban on expanding the IBS. And also, I would like to talk about enforcement problems brought about by these parallel traders. Even the Shenzhen Authority officials said that there is corruption uh, among customs officials. This is acknowledged by the officials themselves. There is nothing that they can do. It's not that we can't resolve the problems of IBS and parallel traders. I think. All it takes is for the CY Lang to do something concrete, and the CBD should be made to understand the plight of the Hong Kong people and also eradicate the problem of corruption among Chinese gov government officials. And I think the problem can be resolved by doing that. So I speak. Ms. Claudia Mo, thank you, Mr. President. For today's motion debate, I'm grateful to Mr. Vincent Fang for sponsoring this motion, even though the debate has no legislative effect. So we'll just be making speeches. But still, I hope that Xi Wanlong would listen uh, to us. For Mr. Vincent Fang's uh, original motion, I do have a lot to say. First of all, he has said that uh, um, some people have even used violence to harass tourists who appear to come from the mainland and local people. I don't think this should be um, sort of uh, argued here. Uh, he's saying that uh, this has already damaged Hong Kong's reputation as a shopper's paradise established for half a century. I cannot bring myself to agree with him. Our reputation as a refuse, uh, as a, a shopper's uh, paradise, I don't think one or two scenes on the uh, TV screen uh, would destroy it. Why is it the mainlanders would like to come here to shop? This is because they don't have any confidence in the commodities on the mainland. From baby formula to soy sauce, um, they are worried. And then uh, even for uh, jewelry, they don't know whether the gold uh, they buy on the mainland is real gold. Now, Mr. Vincent Fang is saying that we need to uh, increase tourism, transport, and retail facilities. No, please, no thanks. Uh, we can't cope. If you add more facilities to receive more visitors, I don't think we can cope. Of course, we welcome tourists from any place um, to come here to patronize us. Of course, we welcome the tourists. It's a matter of the number. And then his idea is that mainland tourists can be diverted from the local people. I just can't believe it. How can we divert the tourists? Does it mean that um, certain areas will be a no-go zone uh, for the local people, while other areas are no-go zones for the mainland tourists? There must be a problem with this idea. And then some would certainly say that this is tantamount to discrimination. Are you discriminating against the tourists or the local people? I think indeed this will be a problem. Moreover, Hong Kong is my home. I should be free to go anywhere I like unless the government is to say that a particular area uh, is, uh, is a place that is restricted. So if I want to go to a shopping mall, if there is one near to the boundary, I should be allowed to go. So you have good intentions to have um, diversion, but I don't think that this is going to work. Moreover, 
I think the wording of the motion is putting the cart before the horse. Um, this is because the crux of the matter is that we just can't cope with the sheer number. And that's why we have this anti-trader protest. And some headlines uh, in the newspapers have referred to um, huge chaos and um, the police have to resort to the use of pepper spray. Just now, um, we were we were told that um, Siwai Leung hit himself in the clubhouse of the Leung scam, that is the government house. I don't think he was sort of treating his fans to a sumptuous uh, lunch, probably it's just an afternoon tea. He criticized me, he named me. We were given to understand if he has anything to allege, allege against me. Now, President, you are the president of the LegCo. If CY Leung has got any allegation against me, then he should um, do so publicly and produce the evidence so that we can uh, have the chance to answer back. That's much better than making a comment uh, in his own uh, residence uh, in private. Uh, but then you may say that there's a private gathering. However, we have been told that there is a transcript for that particular conversation, according to the CE's office. Now, you may say that they are just sharing their personal observations, but then they can, he, he, he should then have said that it, it should not be quoted. It cannot be quoted because it's just a private uh, exchange of views. Um, at first, it was said that he accused me of taking the lead in uh, dragging along the um, shopping trolleys to protest against the uh, traders. When did I do it? For the past three months, I didn't even go to the new territories. The last time I went there was on the New Year's Eve, um, on the 31st of uh, December 2014, I uh, visited a girl at the girl's home because she was accused of using chalk to vandalize a wall. I think it is a matter of the relationship between the executive and the legislature. I'm not going to digress. I see that you are uh, knitting your brows. I just want to tell so I learned that it isn't just a matter of poor governance. Um, he can't even um, make himself clear in a private conversation. And then he had to ratify himself. He said that it wasn't just Claudia Mo, it was also uh, Gary Fenn. It included Gary Fenn as well. And he said that the two of us from the same um, uh, group um, went to um, Lifton Road. And we were not just protesting against the parallel traders, we were against the mainlanders, we were against protesting against the tourists. I just wonder whether uh, he was just um, dreaming and then he was just making up the allegations against us. Uh, so I think he's most irresponsible on this topic. You can see that um, he has no confidence in himself, and then um, that's why he's out of control, and he just uh, air whatever views he would like to say. That's because uh, prior to the uh, meetings of the NP NPC and the um, and the CPPCC, he said that he would do something about the problem, but he came back with no result at all. So he would just try to name a few of us to accuse us of wrongdoing. But in fact, that was done in the past. Uh, it was in the Mong Kok, it was done in Mong Kok, in Sha Tin. And in fact, um, there was this protest by dragging our uh, shopping uh, trolleys to protest against the um, uh, parallel uh, goods traders. 
you can ask around. You can ask mothers whether they are willing and whether they would like to bring their babies to Ocean Park. Of course, everybody would say no. Now, you may say that new arrivals. Uh, we have got many many new arrivals who lead um, mainland tours. Even they admit that uh, there are just too many mainland um, uh, parallel goods uh, traders. So they have been fair to us. But for Siwai Leung, he's always the enemy of the people. He has said that uh, there's nothing wrong with the individual business scheme. There's nothing wrong with the parallel uh, goods traders. He said that everything is fine. It's only when there are people who like to stir up trouble and then the peace has been broken. So his moon's irresponsible. Now even the CEO of Macau, Mr. Choi, is saying that he has to talk to Beijing in relation to the individual visa scheme so as to make sure that there can be some uh, refinements. So even Macau is finding it difficult to cope. But we are sort of... Um, do nothing about the problem. In fact, we have been accused of not being grateful for the assistance given to us. But then it is a matter about the sheer number. We are only a city for the annual um, number of visitors. We received 60 million visitors. 50 million of them came from the mainland and 30 million with um, day trippers, so doubling the number received by the UK, four or five times that of South Korea, nine times that in Australia. How can we cope? Thank you. Mr. Gary Feng. Thank you, President. I thank Mr. Vincent Feng for moving this motion so that we can all uh, make known our views, although I'm not going to uh, support his motion. However, Mr. Vincent Van has pointed out a critical point, and that is the government should be solely held responsible for all the problems associated with IVS. IVS started in 2003, and in 2009, um, Shamjan Household uh, registered residents can come to Hong Kong with multi-entry endorsements. In 2014, the number of mainland visitors reached 47 million, up 68 percent compared with uh, the figures in 2011. As for visitors uh, from Japan, Singapore, Taiwan, or from Canada, US, France, they all recorded a drop. Over reliance on mainland visitors, our tourism industry is now very. Uh, single tracked. I think this is the greatest cause of uh, imbalanced development of our tourism industry. Hong Kong has a population of 7 million, and uh, last year we received as many as 60 million visitors, greater than uh, many of our competitors. Singapore, uh, who has got a population of 5 million, uh, received only 10 million visitors last year, and less than 15 million in the whole year uh, visited Japan. Uh, Japan, which has a population of 1.3 billion, receives only 65 million visitors per year. And yet Singapore has a much higher GDP than Hong Kong. The figures are not going to lie. We have too many visitors. And I think uh, all facets of life are being affected. And yet the SL government has turned a blind eye to all these problems. It has not tried to uh, get the power uh, to uh, control uh, the number of five years. It can only accept uh, whatever the main authorities allowed to leave uh, the mainland. And uh, Siwan before the uh, 1st of July, March last year, uh, said that uh, IVS numbers should be cut by 20%. However, Mr. Grexo said on the 11th of February this year, in answering a written question in this council, made very clear that IVS is, some, is a policy of <coughs> uh, the mainland authorities and a policy to cut the number of visitors 
Oh, we have no say over it. We can only reflect our views to the Beijing authorities. So uh, a land departure tax will be a very effective administrative measure to curb the number of visitors in Hong Kong, yet he criticized it. He said we could not afford to be arrogant even before we became rich. So Xi Wanlong will only care for the feelings of the Beijing government and mainlanders at the expense of the interests of Hong Kong people. He said he uh, he took pride, takes pride himself as the father of IVS, and yet, what about the negative impacts on the daily life of Hong Kong people? He has no leadership at all in amending the policy, and to uh, hide his incompetence, he has uh, used a um, smearing campaign so as to divert people's attention. As Ms. Claudia Mill said just last Sunday, she he criticized myself, and uh, also uh, Ms. Claudia Mill said we are the um, pioneer in opposing IVS. I think he is um, cl uh, he is lying, and he is trying to hide the uh, incompetence and uh, inaction on part of the government. And uh, there's been incessant increase of IVS visitors to Hong Kong, and that's the major cause of resentment locally. Earlier this year, before uh, the NPC meeting, Xi Wanlong again pledged that he would discuss with the mainland authorities so as to uh, curb IVS visitors. And after his met main officials, he came back. Uh, he changed uh, his stance. He said uh, we must take care of the needs of uh, mainlanders to visit Hong Kong. However, according to information, uh, there were 1.5 million uh, people coming to Hong Kong on multi-entry endorsements in 2014, and 20,000 of them uh, came uh, to Hong Kong in between 52 and 99 times, and 10,000 of them came more than 100 times. And as a result, uh, people who uh, came on multi-entry endorsements reached 3 million. Of course, they do not come to Hong Kong for sightseeing. They are not tourists. They're here to uh, act as parallel goods traders or smugglers, and yet the government has not uh, dealt with these uh, quantifiable impacts as a result. There's resentment from Hong Kong people. Multi-entry endorsements has attracted many Shenzhen residents to come to Hong Kong to become pearl goods traders, to buy daily necessities, uh, dealing very, uh, causing a very he heavy burden on our boundary crossings. You say that it will stimulate our economy. In fact, many uh, small shops have no choice but to uh, close because they cannot afford high rental. And then commodities available in these places are very, um, uh, uh, very um, limited. We can only have cosmetic shops and uh, uh, pharmacies and uh, also goods selling a uh, pair of goods. That can survive. Shang Shui Fan and Twin Moon, you go to the shopping malls there. They are there to serve mainland pearl goods smugglers. You can call them shopping malls for these people. In May last year, the large coast area did a survey quoting information from the Census Statistics Department. Between 2004 and 2013, changes in the number of cosmetic shops, the they rose by 1,500%. Shops are uh, selling uh, jewelry, uh, watches, and high end luxury products. Uh, then the figures rose by 30 to 40%. Shops selling uh, books and stationery and small shops, uh, they dropped by 25% during that decade. So there is a serious um, uh, change in our structure is strongly uh, leaned towards uh, the uh, preference of mainland people. In the past, uh, we uh, took pride in ourselves being a shopper's paradise. We had a lot of uh, choices to offer. But now we are experts in selling cosmetics, uh, formula powder, and uh, also uh, uh, even uh, instant noodles and um, lemon teas, and so on and so forth. I think this is a big insult to our reputation as a shopper's paradise, and it will serious affect the healthy development of our retail <coughs> industry. The change in structure of our retail industry has 
highlighted the impacts of multi-entry endorsements and IVS. And I think it is all because of the government's policy to promote Shenzhen-Hong Kong integration. Multi-entry endorsements has uh, brought Hong Kong into the once our life cycle or circle of Shenzhen residents. Shenzhen and Tumun become uh, places for people to shop and to spend their leisure time. They have encroached into our uh, community facilities. They have taken up our uh, the use of sports ground and other recreational facilities. These facilities are established for Hong Kong use. They are not meant for the influx of outsiders. So. This multi-entry endorsement has eaten up the uh, living space of residents in Shamchan, uh, Tumun, and Yunlong, and the social price is high. As I said in my amendment, the purpose of uh, the same-day visitors from Shenzhen come to Hong Kong for different purposes and ordinary traders. And this is uh, as a result of uh, the government's policy to integrate Hong Kong with Shenzhen. And I think uh, waiting for a few more uh, trains at the uh, MTL station is not the solution. Mr. Vincent Fang's motion and uh, the amenders uh, mainly uh, criticize uh, reason uh, protests and Tang Kapi used uh, the wording uh, seriously condemned such actions. I think they are just averting people's attention. In 2010, DAB, uh, during uh, the NPC meeting and uh, CPCC meeting, asked for expansion of the IVS or the uh, multi entry endorsement schemes to cover other pro uh, cities in Guangdong. There's been no thorough consultation in this community regarding Hong Kong Shenzhen integration. The government is must start a public debate and tell us the reasons and uh, get a mandate from our people before it can implement this policy. We should not oversimplify this issue as something about our tourism policy. Mr. Tang Kapu, thank you, President. I speak on behalf of FTU and other trade unions. Um, I would like to strongly condemn the radical groups um, in the name of um, objecting to uh, parallel traders, resort to un, uh, uncivilized uh, violent acts, and um, have abuses and bullying and scolding the shop uh, assistants. And they use very um, strong words, which are very uh, heart-rending. I think their uh, behavior is an act to promote nativism. Well, it's like the 3K um, in the U.S. Cool plan and the government must stop such acts but surprisingly many pan democrats don't believe that there is uh, that there is violent act in such uh, behavior they said that uh, they the worst violence should be taken out from the motion there have been a series of um, acts against uh, tourists and they have uh, become international news and tarnish the image of Hong Kong. And anyone wearing a mask, face mask in Hong Kong, is um, a person who is not um, hospitable at all, according to the tourists, um, industrial associations. The trade unions have received um, requests for help uh, from shop assistants. And they said that they are under a lot of mental pressure or mental stress, and they are um, worried about their personal safety, and that they are also worried that their income may be affected and their livelihood may be affected. Um, they are being dealt a direct blow by the anti-parallel goods uh, groups, and they, these people are shouted 
outside the shops, and they even actually went into the shops, um, scolding and criticizing, hurling insults at the uh, sales assistants there were. Would that lead to physical scuffles? And this is most worrying to the um, salesperson and the trade unions. And the um, industry um, salesperson dare not to speak up because they were afraid of revenge. Um, they were um, worried that they would be um, assaulted, and so they would rather not speak out, and their basic rights have been deprived of as a result. So the trade unions um, are worried in these aspects. Acts of anti-parallel trade uh, traders affects not only the um, retail sales, but also other industries which are connected to the tourism industry, including retail, transport, hotels, and so on. They provide a total of over 700,000 middle and low um, income jobs. Um, in the past year, uh, there has been a lot of turmoil in Hong Kong, and the tourism industry is um, retrogressing. Um, the hotel occupancy rate, retail sales uh, figures, turnovers, and also revenue, uh, the number of visitors to theme parks. I mean, that has been a downward trend. Well, we think that uh, there is a th only a 3.3% unemployment rate, and we are most, uh, almost uh, in full employment. Can that be sustained? This is what is most worrying. The problem of parallel trading stems mainly from the differential in the exchange rate between the two currencies, and also Hong Kong has a good reputation for its own goods. So should we not stop? Uh, should we stop uh, selling goods to mainlanders? No. I think we should concentrate on uh, discussing how to um, strengthen uh, en enforcement action. So that's why that uh, it's no good, not good enough that Mr. So only is here. <coughs> the mainland customs must try to uh, clamp down on parallel traders who, br who bring a lot of goods across the border. And the Hong Kong authorities should also enforce action against those uh, breaching the conditions of stays. And the FEHD should also strengthen their enforcement actions to curb parallel trading activities. What's more important is that many um, concerned district councils, uh, North Districts and Yunlong District Councils have uh, established uh, dedicated working groups on street management. Has the administration paid enough attention to these initiatives? Do they um, view district councils as their partners, or they are just uh, looking at the problem from a tourism perspective? So I appeal sincerely that we should not be led by the radical groups. Uh, let's not view it just purely from the angle of the tourist policy. Uh, I think we need to review the multiple entry permits um, uh, policy. We should uh, put a restriction on the number of entries allowed. Uh, we must not uh, deny that some Hong Kong people actually are parallel traders themselves. Uh, from last week, um, the Secretary for Security provided some figures those arrested and are confirmed are convicted um, for bringing excessive uh, formula, baby formula, 35% uh, of them were local people. These are specific figures. And there are some other figures uh, available as well. So <coughs> even if we put restriction of, on multiple entry permits, will the pro problem be eradicated totally? That can never be guaranteed. Hong Kong has a very good reputation in its commodities, and there is also a, a, a great differential in the exchange rate between the two currencies. I think the problem will persist. I think we should adopt a multi-prong approach. We must uh, put restriction on multiple entry permits. We should also strengthen administrative measures, and also we should expeditiously build shopping malls at border areas or boundary areas. Uh, some community groups uh, are doing it at Lok Cho area, and the government is uh, trying to help out. 
as much as possible. But apart from Lok Ma Chow, should other locations be considered as well? And we should not wait till we've got complaints before we encourage people to set up such uh, shopping malls. For example, Hong Kong Zhihao Macau Bridge that will be commissioned after 2017. Can we do something at the artificial island 130 hectares um, to build a topside development, to build a shopping mall um, for mainlanders who just want to shop here and then they can do it quickly and then return to the mainland uh, quickly too so that they will not go into the urban areas. So I hope the administration can uh, have an integrated approach. They should do something on multiple entry permits and they should also strengthen administrative enforcement and they should also encourage uh, shopping malls at the boundary areas to be built. They should not come up with an arbitrary response. If they do so, then, well, all political parties here would not accept your response. As for the suggestion of a uh, departure tax, after you has reservation, there are now 180,000 Hong Kong people going into the mainland if we do it unilaterally. And then um, the mainland authorities reciprocate by also imposing a tax. Then the, well, Hong Kong people will suffer a loss. Have we made an in-depth assessment on the impact? So I have reservations on that. Mr. Vincent Fang criticized um, the government for imposing baby formula export in 2013. Um, I must say that after you believe that this move benefits Hong Kong people and Hong Kong's economy as well, so that local uh, parents can be assured that they can get baby formula in Hong Kong. So I urge that the administration should continue with this restriction. And I also urge the uh, Hong Kong government to restore, rebuild the culture of Hong Kong as a hospitable uh, city. Mr. Xin Chung Kai, first of all, I'm grateful to Mr. Vincent Fang for sponsoring the motion debate so that we can talk about the impact of the uh, mainland tourists, in particular the parallel goods traders. I think the multiple entry endorsement uh, is the crux of the matter. For parallel goods trading, it has been bothering us for a number of years, but then the SARG has turned a blind eye to it. Even if the administration has observed that there is a problem, it hasn't come up with a solution. Therefore, today we need to discuss the problems as to prevent the relationship between the mainland and Hong Kong from worsening further. And we don't want to have an outbreak of serious confrontations between the local people and the mainlanders. Now, the tourism hotspots have become very overcrowded. In fact, we have had a number of um, motion debates. But then, unfortunately, the government is not um, doing anything about it. The government hasn't got a viable solution. I, I wondered if I should call it uh, dragging her feet. Um, I think we have already sponsored a number of motion debates on the same topic. For the Democratic Party, we would like to come up with seven measures, hoping that we can um, uh, reduce the impact of the problem on us. First of all, we hope that there will be a land arrival tax um, for tourists. Well, this is for arrival. Uh, at the land boundary crossing. Now you pay $120 for departure at airport and uh, $11 um, for uh, sea transport. We are supposed to apply the same um, departure tax for all um, passengers. But then if we apply it to everybody leaving, Hong Kong, it will be a problem. There will be too much. So it's better if we impose a land arrival tax. Uh, it has been said that uh, we need to worry about the uh, imposition of a similar tax on us. But then we have to um, take this. Uh, of course, there are people who come to Hong Kong to study, but then they are Hong Kong children. They are not tourists, so they would not be affected. 
and which would like to scrap the multiple entry endorsement. I think we need to talk to the Shenzhen authorities so that um, they will be permitted to come to Hong Kong eight times a year. According to certain surveys, on average, the Shenzhen um, uh, visitors would like to come to Hong Kong eight times a year. So by amending it to cap it at eight times a year, I'm sure we can satisfy the demand of the ordinary tourists. Anybody coming to Hong Kong for more than eight times, um, probably uh, they suspected um, to be engaged in parallel trading. Uh, of course, it's better for Shenzhen authority to change it. Um, even if they don't, I think we can impose an immigration control. Uh, for Shenzhen, it is a matter of departure. For us, it is a matter of arrival. So either Shenzhen or the Hong Kong authorities should impose a limit. In this way, we can ease the problem. Of course, in our recommendations, we have also said that um, the mainland tourists should be allowed to come to Hong Kong once a day. Um, and Vincent has said that perhaps um, uh, a second trip during the same day should be subject to a tax. Uh, of course, we do want to target at the business travelers. Um, we propose a land arrival tax for the tourists. I think this is uh, similar to the idea mooted by Vincent Fang, that is, uh, the passenger will be subject to a tax um, when he is traveling to Hong Kong for the second time. But of course, our idea will uh, cover more tourists. For the idea of a land arrival tax, the advantage is as um, known to everybody, for those coming to Hong Kong by air, they spend more money. For others who come on land, uh, probably they don't spend as much. Probably they come here to shop for uh, groceries or uh, dinner necessities. Um, Mr. Wang Ting Kuang, our colleague, has uh, proposed the idea of a border town uh, shopping mall. I think it is good, and we also buy this idea. And in fact, in Shanghai, um, the Shenzhen Authority is thinking about a uh, shopping mall. I think it would be a good idea so that the mainlanders just go to Shanghai to uh, shop. As to the opening up of Chongying Street, again, we can ease the um, pressure because there is a huge demand for Hong Kong uh, goods. Now, a lot of you have referred to the experience of Macau. Last Monday, um, the chief executive of Macau said that um, he was really concerned about the matter. It should be given top priority, and he would ask the central authority to fine tune the um, individual visit scheme so as not to jeopardize the quality of living. So even in Macau, they know that they mustn't sacrifice the quality of the living just to receive more mainland visitors. On the other hand, for Siwai Leung, he would only ask us to balance the interests of the local people and the needs of the mainland visitors. It is a matter of imbalance. Now, Secretary, you have already um, given an answer on this point. Now you're expected to answer the question again. Um, in addition to the proposals that I've just made, the DP thinks that we shouldn't allow more cities to be added to the list of 49 mainland cities um, included in the IVS. We believe that such initiatives will be useful in addressing the problem. The DP thinks that we have been talking about it for more than a year's time. The government hasn't delivered. Uh, Zhang Dejiang, um, chairman of the NPC, has already asked the um, State uh, Tourism Administration and Wang Guangya to address the problem. Last May, Xi Wailun said that uh, he would like to consult the public view on cutting the IVS uh, by 20%. But nothing has come out of it. 
More than a year has passed. It seems that the government hasn't been able to deliver anything. Now, the crux of the matter is that we are reaching the tipping point. If the sea is not to do anything about it, if it's not to do more about it, the tension will build up. It seems that things have died down um, for the past week or two, but I'm afraid that this is but the calm before the onset of a storm. So if we allow the matter to continue, I'm worried that it will only escalate. We hope that the CE will take on the matter and consider different initiatives. There are also two minor points that I wish to mention. Um, I've referred to the shopping center at the border. Now I want to comment on the restrictions on the luggage. I think it is administrative in nature. If the MTRCL is to enforce the rule strictly, then something can be done. And we should also consider uh, imposing a cross-boundary luggage surcharge. I think such initiatives can uh, discourage uh, parallel goods trading and reduce the nuisance on the local people. We should also consider segregating uh, the luggage from the passengers along the Israel line. That is, for those with a lot of luggage, they should be confined to designated train compartments so as to reduce the nuisance caused to the um, commuters. I uh, hope that the nuisance can be um, Reduced. Let me say this once again. Uh, we don't condone the use of violence against uh, many visitors. Uh, we uh, censure such uh, acts. Thank you. Mr. Chen Chin. Thank you, President. The wording and uh, the speech and uh, the words used by Mr. Vincent Fan in his speech cannot be supported by myself and I have therefore proposed amendments to his motion. However, I can agree more to his opening remarks. The uh, problems associated with IVS, we could put the blame on the SL government. The SL government is the culprit. I think he has made it very clear, although he has not included such uh, remarks in his regional motion. And therefore, my amendment says, Liberation protests expressing discontent with the flood of main and parallel traders and tourists under the IVS have occurred repeatedly in Hong Kong. The root cause of the problem lies in the SAR's government turning a blind eye to the continuous nuisance to residents of the districts caused by main and parallel traders and lacking the ability, despite having the will to cancel the policy on multi entry endorsements, leaving Hong Kong people with no alternative but to rescue themselves by asserting pressure on the SAR government. In this connection, this council solemnly condemns the SAR government for blindly fawning upon the Communist Party, tilting in favor of the interests of the main authorities, regarding public resentment and creating divisions in Hong Kong, and holds the police responsible for abusing its power and using brutal means to disperse, arrest, and detain the protesters. In fact, uh, parallel trading is not a new problem. Some uh, loyalists uh, would take this as a golden opportunity to uh, put the blame on protesters against parallel trading, just like uh, Mr. Tang Kapil and Mrs. Regina Yip, who are moving amendments to the motion. I think you have uh, got your target wrong, and I think your mentality is that of the mainland. The government should address the uh, difficulties and problems uh, faced by residents. Instead, they are uh, dealing with uh, people who have uh, raised these issues. Those who come out to protest, you arrest them, you beat them up so that they dare not protest anymore. They will not uh, raise uh, any issue and uh, the problem is gone. I think this is the mentality of the main and so is that of the SL government and some of the pro-establishment members here. The uh, issue with parallel trading uh, doesn't happen today. Even before I uh, ran uh, for a seat in this council, uh, in the North District, they are already subject to the nuisance of parallel traders causing a lot of inconvenience to their daily lives. Back then, it was just inconvenience, but now uh, they cannot 
tolerate it anymore because uh, such activities uh, obstruct their traffic. And uh, there are also conflicts uh, because people cannot put up with the large luggage uh, carried around by parallel traders. What can the government do? The government can deal with the problem using its policies. While it may not be able to eradicate the problem with us for uh, uh, to uh, abolish the multi-entry uh, endorsement policy, however, Siwai Leung uh, had a change of uh, mind before and after the uh, MPC and IPCC meetings. He said that it was difficult. However, people can put up with it no longer. Some residents in the North District have no choice but to uh, take the problem to themselves. But directly exerting pressure on SL government and parallel traders. Of course, people say that this may backfire, uh, that such activities are too uh, risky, and people might have overdone it. I've seen young people shouting, yelling at people speaking Mandarin. Uh, my, some volunteers next to me uh, try to correct uh, the uh, young people. People are speaking. Purhua may be from Singapore or from Taiwan. And I said, well, even if uh, they were mainlanders, so what? Because uh, mainlanders could also be quality tourists. However, many young people, undeniably, have started to have this uh, thinking, and we should correct or educate them. However, the government should not turn the blind eye to the situation and condemn uh, Hong Kong people when uh, conflicts uh, erupt. Uh, the amendments talks about uh, having uh, cross-border shopping malls and uh, visitors carrying luggage uh, should be confined to designated uh, car uh, trains of uh, car, uh, cars. I think this is not feasible. Two years ago, uh, we uh, introduced the uh, two-tin rule on baby formula, hoping that um, local mothers uh, will have no difficulties in buying baby formula for their babies. Yes, uh, the policy is quite effective, but from time to time, uh, we have attention in the supply of baby formula. According to a survey uh, by a Consumer Council earlier this year, 206 uh, shops uh, were polled, and uh, in Changquan O, uh, the um, shortage was up to 20%. So uh, it may appear that parallel activities focus in the northern district, but because of such activities, uh, commodities have been uh, channeled to uh, the North District for sale. So uh, in other places, there is a sh shortage, supply is tight. All right, if we set up cross-border shopping malls, thinking that uh, by sweeping it under the carpet, the problem is gone, what about a uh, short supply in other districts and also raise prices? And having a dedicated uh, train compartments, this is, of course, not a solution. You divert, you separate them, hoping that there will be less conflicts in train compartments. Well, even if that can be avoided, what about the platforms and the uh, train stations and also the streets? Confrontations will still happen. And for surcharge, well, last week I asked a question of the Security Bureau. In our railway bylaws, uh, I asked about um, MTR staff uh, injured while on duty. Last year, over 50 of them uh, were hurt, and over 500 cases, they called the police for help. Uh, some employees. Uh, uh, on duty told me that it was very difficult for them to act. Uh, uh, Parallel traders uh, intimidated them, threatened them, uh, saying that uh, they knew where they live and uh, therefore uh, employees uh, dare not uh, take action. And last week also asked for a uh, ratio of uh, Parallel traders uh, uh, of our local people and mainlanders, and I was told there was 65 to 35. And I asked, how come ex co councillor said that most of the parallel traders were Hong Kong people? And he said that, uh, according to our statistics, is 25% of them are Hong Kong people, and uh, every child is half half. 
So uh, you do not trust your own statistics. You just listen to uh, the figures from the your counterparts across the boundary, and uh, you average it out and say it is fifty fifty. All right. Senior officials should not say that a half of the pair of traders are Hong Kong people. Of course, uh, Hong the uh, mainland would say that uh, we take up seventy percent of those pair of traders because uh, mainlanders would. Give them a bribe, and they will not be arrested. So most of the people arrested will be Hong Kong people. And uh, talk about um, taking enforcement action against people who disrupt social order. How are our police uh, enforcing the law? Uh, Mr. Lai Tung Kok, as for us, is not a help here. You can hear what I'm saying? In Hong Kong, uh, we. Our police uh, would not uh, relent in arresting people, so the people will be intimidated into not uh, taking to the streets anymore. I have uh, personally handled uh, these cases: two young people, one aged eighteen and another nineteen, night at a uh, black sport, a back alley in Shangshui. Uh, they were arrested. They had done nothing, but they had uh, they didn't. Even, one had a, um, a lighter, the other none, and one. Uh, was arrested for a suspected arson, and the other, an, as an accomplice, they were not allowed bail. They were detained for three weeks, and then they were allowed bail at a uh, high court. And what happened? A few days ago, the prosecution decided to uh, cancel all prosecution. So to them, there is no cause for detention arrest. Uh, the uh, Two, uh, the two uh, suspects were accused. One accused of arson, and the other uh, uh, abating uh, to uh, commit arson. So they were re they were detained for three weeks. They couldn't even stay with the family <coughs> at Chinese New Year. Their mind will be totally changed. Uh, would they decide uh, to uh, resort to drastic action because peaceful demonstrations uh, would not work? They uh, were set up by the police. Uh, they were framed by the police. They didn't even have a lighter. One didn't even have a lighter, and he was detained for suspected arson. You. Mr. Yu C. Wing. President. Hong Kong has been branded as a hospitable city and a shopper's paradise, and we've prided ourselves on that. But since the end of the year before the last, the locust action and also the violent acts of the anti-parallel goods protesters, um, they escalated their actions, they hurled abuses at shop assistants and harassed tourists and local people. Some of the activities were videotaped by the tourists and the locals and were widely reported and the news got spread all over the world. Our image as a hospitable city um, has all been has on gone down the drain because of this. Now there have been a series of violent acts against parallel traders, and it's um, adversely affecting the uh, tourism industry. According to the tourist boards in uh, information, there were only 190 uh, groups compared to 470 groups uh, in the previous year, and the demonstrations have slowed down a bit. And recently, and now every day we are seeing some 300 to a groups from the mainland coming to Hong Kong. So um, the, the mainlanders are very sensitive to whether Hong Kong is a safe place to travel in. Apart from the mainland, we are, uh, have risks also in the Southeast Asian countries. The tourism uh, industry has been uh, saying that um, a lot of calm Chinese compatriots on in the Southeast Asians have asked whether Hong Kong is a safe place because they are afraid that they will be harassed because they speak Kuo Tung Hotel. Uh, in the past two months, it, revenue has dropped by 20 percent. Guest houses, a drop of over uh, 40 percent. During the Lunar New Year, the five uh, sports. Um, Ocean Park, Disneyland, Ongping 360, Peak Tram, and also the Wax Museum. The visitor numbers has also registered a drop of 10 to 10, 20 percent. And the Ocean Park uh, in March, the drop has reached 30 percent. If this uh, situation persists, a small minority of people 
uh, uh, doing these uh, violent acts every week, and I'm afraid that uh, Hong Kong's tourist industry will enter will enter a doldrum this year. Um, there is a difference between the prices of the commodities between the two places, and Hong Kong goods are reputed for their good quality. And this is just natural that mainlanders come to Hong Kong to shop. The crux of the problem is that um, is on the day um, same day mainland tourists, and they are causing nuisance, and they are um, causing nuisance in Lok Ma Chau, Yun Long and so on, and the people's lives there have been affected. The problem has been here for several years, but the government has never come up with a good solution. There are just stopgap measures uh, which have not proved effective. Some radicals, including uh, those who are fighting for Hong Kong's independence, are making use of local uh, sentiments to uh, cause troubles, stir up troubles. They would try to uh, stir up the conflicts between Hong Kong people and mainlanders, and they ha have no they're not sincere in resolving a problem uh, to solve the parallel traders' problem. Some people have um, suggested uh, uh, deleting, um, abolishing multiple entry endorsement policy and also imposing a rival uh, tax. I, uh, I disagree with those. Well, uh, around 30,000 people are mere parallel trade gooders, and it's it takes up a small portion of the one half a million of permanent residents who are on a multiple entry endorsement. If we can uh, put a, a restriction on multiple entry endorsement, that might help a bit, but then um, that won't help resolve the problem thoroughly because mainlanders can ask Hong Kong people to be to carry parallel goods for them, and the nuisance in Shangshui and Yunlong would not. Uh, go away. So if we <coughs> abolish multiple entry endorsement policy, it will not resolve the problem. Conversely, it will give the impression that Hong Kong is discriminating against the mainlanders and the middle income people in the mainlanders will not come to Hong Kong as a result and they will turn to other cities to shop and to visit. Mr. Vincent Fang's motion says that the SAL government should increase uh, tourism, transport, and retail facilities for diverting mainland tourists. I agree with that. But I disagree with um, the imposition of a land departure tax. If we can uh, limit, say, the visits uh, of a multiple entry endorsement to one day or several, one time, once or several times, then I think the problem can be resolved. And if uh, we impose a departure tax, then mainland will also impose a similar tax on Hong Kong people. Some um, six, 60 million uh, Hong Kong people go to mainland every year. If a tax is imposed on Hong Kong people, then um, uh, people will have to show their greater cost in going to China and also may also um, sp spend more time in doing that. I have the following suggestions. First, <coughs> to review comprehensively the IVS. In 2003, the CPG to, um, has responded to the SRG's request to uh, introduce IVS in 49 cities. And in 2009, in response to the SRG's request, also introduced the multiple entry endorsement for Shenzhen permanent residents. The policies have been implemented for a number of years, and is there is a need to review them comprehensively. If we just cancel the multiple entry endorsement um, for Shenzhen permanent residents, then these residents may believe that they are being discriminated against and they would turn to other tourist destinations or shorten their length of stay in Hong Kong. And that will deal a direct blow to tourism related industries in Hong Kong. So I suggest that the SARG should enhance the, uh, together with the CPG, uh, multiple entry endorsement policies. Excuse me. <coughs> it should also consider expanding the number of cities on top of the 49 cities for IBS and also um, review the uh, 
the outbound and inbound policies of the two uh, places, and that will facilitate the healthy the development of Hong Kong's tourism sector. Second, we should adopt a multi-pronged approach to combat uh, parallel traders. In my re amendment, I think well, I said we should cooperate with the mainland customs to combat the activities. Hong Kong is a free port, and uh, it, it is not illegal to take goods out of Hong Kong. Parallel uh, traders carrying a large quantities of commodities into the mainland may break some uh, mainland laws. So we should uh, strengthen enforcement and so that uh, the parallel trade uh, traders groups uh, will be deterred. The government should also enhance enforcement ac action against mainlanders breaching conditions of stay on uh, obstruction of streets, illegal parking, and loading and loading of goods which have um, caused congestion on roads. Well, um, enforcement action on these aspects should be stepped up. The government should also um, increase its efforts in cracking down on units of industrial buildings being used for parallel goods activities. So we hope that through these measures, um, the nuisance can be minimized. Third, we should build the uh, shopping malls as uh, soon as possible. I think it's good that uh, tourists come and uh, shop and they can create uh, job opportunities. The crux of the problem is that there are too many visitors and people's daily lives are affected. So if the SARG can make appropriate arrangements to uh, in Lok Ma Chao, Lo Wu Sha Tao Kok and some border areas to identify lands and encourage the uh, business sector to take part in building border shopping malls, I think that uh, Mainland um, tourists can be diverted to shop there, and then nuisance to um, NT people can be minimized. Lastly, I hope that the government can adopt uh, dark exit diversion measures, and also uh, strictly enforce the uh, demonstrators, uh, enforce um, law against demonstrators. If they do not do that, then you are indirectly encouraging people to continue resorting to such actions, and that would do all sorts of evils to Hong Kong and not any good. So I speak. Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, thank you, Mr. President. The tourism industry is our pillar industry. Mainland visitors contribute most to our tourism revenue. For many years, uh, we have uh, seen the substantial contribution. The retail, catering, hotel, and other industries have prospered as a result. But then Hong Kong is still a small place. With more and more mainlanders coming to Hong Kong, our receiving capacity has been strained. And as a result, in Shangsha, Yunlong, Sha Tin, Mong Kok, Chim Sa Chui, and Causeway Bay, we have seen um, many, many people crowding the streets and the uh, public transport. Daily necessities and baby formula have been uh, grabbed um, by the shoppers. Uh, uh, the rental for retail shops uh, have been um, escalated. Um, mainlanders have different uh, habits uh, and culture from us, and as a result, there have been clashes. All such uh, means that our daily lives have been impacted upon, and from time to time, the dissatisfaction um, exploded. Uh, Hong Kong is a place uh, where we we are a civilized society. We shouldn't take it out on our tourists. Not too long ago, uh, somebody um, instigated uh, an unrest. Um, tourists were arrested, and even Hong Kongers, who look like mainlanders, were also arrested. The young, the old, the weak, the the women were all arrested. Um, they even hurled uh, insults. It is a very mean tactic, and then the rioters um, dare not um, identify themselves. They all put on a facial mask. So it is a very mean tactic, and we must uh, criticize and condemn it severely. 
and we also hope that the police will enforce the law strictly. Yes, they are just the um, minority. They are a handful. They are the black sheep. They don't represent the people of Hong Kong. However, the image of Hong Kong has been tarnished as a result. And our retail industry is facing a downturn. The government of Hong Kong should uh, remedy the situation. There should be publicity uh, in our source markets to say that we are still a city of hospitality. And we must also emphasize to our own citizens that we need to uh, be a good host and uh, we should prevent such violence uh, from emerging again. Of course, we do have a big problem of inadequate receiving capacity. We want to maintain the status of the tourism industry as a pillar industry. We don't want our daily lives to be affected. We need to have more tourism facilities which enhance our receiving capacity for bus routes and MTR corridors already overcrowded by the tourists. We should ask the operators to enhance the frequency. We should also strictly enforce the um, size restrictions of our luggage. And for um, the problem of over-concentration of tourists in certain areas, many years ago, the DAB already uh, proposed the idea of having uh, border shopping malls so that we can revitalize the local economy. We can also create jobs. Now, with the joint efforts of many different parties, um, we'll soon see the uh, commencement of construction works for a Lok Ma Chow shopping mall. We hope that uh, the shopping mall uh, can benefit Hong Kong as a whole. And I hope that the government should play the role as a facilitator so that um, more shopping malls uh, could be encouraged uh, to be set up near the boundary so as to divert the tourists. Now, in the amendments uh, to the uh, motion today, many have asked for the scrapping of the individual you know, visa scheme, imposition of a land uh, rifle tax, etc. I'm against them. Now, having the multiple entry endorsements for Shenzhen uh, visitors, it has bring about a lot of convenience to them. It has also uh, caused the uh, excessive number of arrivals. Uh, between 2009 and 2014, we see that the number has been multiplied by 10 times. We've got 14 million uh, tourists from the, Shen from the municipality of Shenzhen. Well, too many tourists would mean that our daily lives will be affected. Even tourists themselves are also inconvenienced. Therefore, before we can expand our capacity, we should reasonably restrict the number of visas permitted under the multiple entry endorsement. In fact, we have also asked for a cap to be placed on the maximum number of visas uh, per person per year. Of course, we know that their parents could have to take their children across the boundary to go to school. Uh, they should be given exemption. Adjusting the number of visits permitted per year doesn't mean that we are scrapping it in totality. It is like a small shop not being able to cope with a large number of customers. I think on the one hand, we would like to expand the shop space, and on the other hand, we should do something to divert um, the clients. But that's not the same as driving away the clients, uh, telling off the customers, or even uh, keeping a dog to bark at the, at the customers and scare them away. Therefore, I don't think it's reasonable to have a land arrival tax. Every day, almost 200,000 Hong Kong citizens go to the mainland for work, for family visits, for tourism purposes. If we are to impose a land arrival tax, we cannot expect the mainland not to do the same and impose a tax on Hong Kong citizens. Therefore, we can see that the proponents may attract attention for a moment. They may even think that they can secure more votes for them at elections, but I don't think they're going to generate any results. Perro goose traders posing as genuine tourists are affecting us. 
but we can't take it out on the tourists generally. We should be specific about our solutions. In Tuen Mun Yun Long and other uh, districts near the boundary, the traders are buying the goods for resale on the mainland. Well, the activities themselves are already a breach of law. For the mainlanders, if they bring back an excessive amount of daily necessities without paying for tax, they are already committing an offence of smuggling. If they do it in Hong Kong, they may be breaching the condition of stay. If somebody is to um, sort of distribute the goods or sort out the goods on street, it is a matter of obstructing the street. If you carry out the activities in an industrial building, it is against the land lease. And if you bring an excessive amount of baby formula out of Hong Kong, this is against the import and export ordinance. So the parallel goods trading is against the law both in Hong Kong and on the mainland. We need to step up our law enforcement. The law enforcement agencies should step up the visits and inspection so that Shangshui would no longer be bothered and then citizens can be freed from the uh, nuisance. Uh, Mr. President, there are 11 amendments proposed to the motion. There will be heated debate. Let me state my position. Uh, owing to what I have said, any um, broad brush approach to scrap the IVS or imposition of a land arrival tax will be um, will not be agreed uh, by me and for um, Mr. Chen's and Mr. Fan's um, amendments, they are outrageous. They blame the government for causing the violence. Uh, violence is violence. You can't say that just because the government is not doing uh, well and so you can justify the um, violence. Otherwise, one day a robber can also blame the government for failing to address the wealth gap and so he can uh, go to rob. Otherwise, others would also say that he's an arsonist because fire safety has not been properly carried out. Mr. Chen also accused the uh, police for using force. I think he just tried to uh, vent his uh, grievance. I think we hate it. I think uh, Mr. Chen would like to lobby the support of the radicals. I have to say that this sort of homework is not uh, up to standard. You need to improve. And for Dr. K.K. Kwok, he has said that um, on Sunday, C.Y. Leung uh, treated us to a um, luxurious uh, dinner, but in fact, I don't know where he got the information. I think uh, it was just a cup of tea. We had a word over a cup of tea only. Dr. Fernando Zhe. President, it's not I don't want to uh, show my real face. It's just I'm suffering from a cold. The serious um, imbalances caused by IVS and uh, multi-entry endorsements are only those who live in mass can uh, fail to see the problems because uh, these issues affect, it, affect everyone in Hong Kong, our daily life, our transport, our shopping. Well, every minute detail aspect of our life is being affected and the government can afford to do nothing for such a long time. It has turned a blind eye to what's happening and uh, its posture is uh, this uh, restorative uh, and uh, Protests have affected Hong Kong's image as a shopper's paradise, and uh, this is a problem of enforcement. I don't think we can simplify Chinese Hong Kong conflicts into such a simple issue. You should not say that it's just a problem with enforcement and that there are people who are too radical. In fact, Every aspect of Hong Kong is being affected by government's policy of Hong Kong Shenzhen integration. They want to promote exchange between the two cities at the expense of uh, Hong Kong's interest. So people locally born and and those who uh, grew up in Hong Kong and who love Hong Kong cannot help feeling that whether 
be uh, shopping or schooling or our uh, other aspect of our daily life uh, have been um, taken over and that uh, things are no longer planned for Hong Kong people. In the past few weeks, uh, there were some scuffles or conflicts, of course. Uh, we will not condone to any uncivilized behavior, whether it be uh, verbal abuse or physical violence against anyone. We will not support such behavior. However, uh, these incidents uh, reflect a conflict of interest behind it, shops and uh, public transport and streets are being severely affected because of parallel trading. Uh, the uh, North District and Yunnan at the border are being seriously affected, and even for other places, the link read has. Uh, sold uh, some second tier and third tier shopping malls and they were well received by the market. I myself live in Abde Chow and yet our shopping mall will be sold for an uh for for outlets of uh famous brands. So even as far as the South District our daily lives are being affected. We want to buy a ba sick daily necessities uh, such as newspapers. We have to go to a chain store. We don't have uh, newspaper stores anymore. Uh, there is no place to develop our photos. And uh, we don't even, very soon, we won't even have a bank. So the situation is so imbalanced. You don't uh, protest against these and you criticize people uh, in trying uh, to restore Hong Kong into its original condition. It's all because of a of a maladministration. Mr. Lai Kong Tech wrote an article earlier on, and according to his uh, estimation, there are about seventy two billion uh, dollars worth of commodities uh, traded through parallel trading. And a tax of uh, gone uh, amounted to one hundred and sixty million dollars and and most of them uh, is uh, benefit the apparel traders they can um, they can buy their way uh, through uh, the customs officers and also the wholesalers and even Huang Geng or Shenzhen official agree that there might be corruption. According to Tai Kung Pao, uh, they have they had an investigative report. Wang, the uh, Huang Gang uh, customs uh, uh, might be uh, condoning such activities, and then a uh, bribery case involving officials of Chateau Kok. So, parallel traders are operating together with the customs officials. Uh, they have a price list of how much a bribe is involved for smuggling a car, and uh, they have different uh, percentage of uh, of bribes for different levels of officials. Uh, the contact person and the uh, customer officer, a more senior officer, so and so forth. This is, in fact, an, a syndicate with interests involved. These parallel trading syndicates and also the customs across the border. Well, Hong Kong people, are Hong Kong people involved recently. Uh, there is a. Uh, Baby farm, baby uh, formula, formula uh, wholesale city, and according to the media, it uh, belongs to a group, and uh, the boss is Mr. Jin uh, Jun Tao. He is actually from the PLG on the mainland, and he claimed that anything uh, purchased here could uh, be shipped. To any place on the mainland. So, how much is involved? We uh, say that in Hong Kong, uh, our retail industry and our tourism industry are very important, uh, feeding many families. But uh, should we position ourselves as a place for mainlanders uh, to spend money to uh, seek? Entertainment for financing, uh, buying of luxury flats uh, for investment and for their family members to stay in. 
uh, should Hong Kong position itself as such a place do we need to build more shopping malls underground uh, so under Kowloon Park under Victoria Park Hong Kong Park we can have underground space and we can just fill up our city lungs and we can have an artificial island uh, develop uh, land town so that the whole of Hong Kong can become a big shopping mall is this a way to resolve the problem other than money and a corruption and bribery on the mainland and uh, should Hong Kong go down this route Hong Kong people at a loss as to what to do we have been uh, crying for help for so many years and the government has done nothing and Siwa Leung is the father of IVS now we have so many conflicts we of course by no means support such conflicts and uh, it's not until uh, the conflicts erupted that the government came out to say that they had to face up to the problem and then main officials said that there must be a review of the IVS and uh, they should review the capacity of Hong Kong but I think we've already overdone it uh, the number of visitors we received is well over uh, the whole country so should we just develop Hong Kong this way? Should we disregard uh, the needs of our environment? And so everyone in Hong Kong uh, should uh, be employees in the tourism industry. So you want to position Hong Kong as such a city. And that's why you won't let us have democracy. Because if Hong Kong people can be masters of themselves, we don't want Hong Kong to become a big shopping mall because uh, it all boils down to administration and governance and Hong Kong's positioning. Hong Kong cannot allow economic development to prevail over all things. We need diversified development. We must have a chance to speak out for ourselves. Conflicts today have stemmed from the fact that uh, people with vested interests have total control of the market and they want to continue to profiteer and uh, they have uh, forced Hong Kong people into a cul-de-sac. I hope those conflicts will be a wake-up call for you. We should all awaken to the problems. We should not just have our eyes on money. Hong Kong should not turn uh, all our local communities into shopping centers. There must be a cap on IVS. We must cohort to uh, the multi-entry endorsement policy. And it's not just about development of our retail and tourism industries. The problem is how Hong Kong should position itself. And whether the Hong Kong say our government would put Hong Kong's interests f as a uh, primary consideration when it comes to uh, formulating policies. Thank you. No. Mr. Andrew Lang, I'd like to thank Mr. Vincent Fang for moving the motion related to a problem which has upset Hong Kong for a long time. There are many demonstrations against parallel traders in the uh, new territories, and some um, pan Democrats have reportedly participated, and it deals a heavy blow to Hong Kong's reputation as a shopper's paradise and it affects uh, tourism industry, hotel and catering industries and also upsets the rule of law and order situation in Hong Kong. So um, this motion is very important to Hong Kong. In the latest budget, the FS also mentioned that the tourism accounts for 5% of the GTB and also is related to the development of retail industries and it employs some 270,000 people. In 2014, 60 million uh, visitors to Hong Kong, 12% rise, total consumption of uh, over $35 billion and rise of uh, 9%. And the, and the Golden Week last year, Tun, mm, Tun, uh, um, Drunk and Boat Festival and also the Lunar New Year Festival holidays, uh, the number of visitors has dropped year on year. Even for the Golden Week, the visitor number has, rised, uh, has risen. In 2014, Group Tours has dropped by 1.8%. And in the first two, uh, two months, a drop of 4.5% is registered. In the, in the U.S., in Japan, and so on, they have also 
streamline the uh, and the visa arrangements for mainlanders. So, because they see that uh, the mainland tourists are driving force in the development of their own tourism industry, so um, tourism has become a, a, a leisure pastime of middle income um, groups in, in mainland, and 70% of them are taken on overseas trips every year. Retail sector, there has been a drop for six uh, consecutive months. And in January, a drop of 14.6%. The chairman of the Ocean Park said that in March, the number of visitors has dropped uh, by 30% year on year. And that is because, um, the, because the, the currencies in Korean and so on have, uh, have depreciated and attracted more tourists. So Hong Kong's tourism industry is facing many external and internal problems. If we restrict the number of mainland visitors, we will deal an even heavier blow to the tourism industry. And some people may even lose their jobs. In the community, there have been suggestions that Hong Kong should uh, attract tourists from uh, countries other than the mainland, and we should not depend too heavily on mainland tourists. I don't think we should pitting these two ideas against each other. In fact, the tourism uh, board and the government has been developing new uh, markets and has been uh, devoting a lot of efforts in that regard. Um, but there, it is constrained in many ways. For example, Disneyland. And on Ping uh, 360, in the past decade, there have not been new tourist attractions built. In the past five years, hotels, overnight tourists uh, have risen in 64%. Um, and the number of hotel rooms has risen only by 22%, lagging behind. And we, there is much room for our support facilities. Mainland middle um, income families would like to bring their children to um, a holiday, and then they, the government should uh, think about more uh, family-friendly tourist policies, and also try to reduce the conflict conflicts between the mainlanders and local people. The FS in his budget has. Um, raised many um, support measures, waiving license fees, uh, extending the guarantee loan scheme for the SMEs, and also various uh, funds for SMEs will be uh, continue to be provided. But for SMEs, especially the um, street uh, shop owners, they are facing the demonstrations of the anti-parallel group, groups, and they are put into a light and have to suffer losses. Many people have suggested that we should deal with the problem of brought about by multi-entry endorsement. We should try to strike a balance between tourist activities and local uh, livelihood issues. We should try to make distinction among various groups of tourists, and we should also review and regularly multi-entry endorsement policies. But as many members have pointed out, the greatest problem of parallel uh, goods is that there is a difference in the quality of goods be between Hong Kongs and mainlands. And Many parallel traders have caused nuisance to local people. The North uh, District residents are vulnerable, and Hong Kong is a free port, and parallel goods activities are not an offense. Um, Mr. Lai Tong Kwok, in response to our question last week, said that parallel traders uh, well, half of them are locals and half of them are mainlands. And BPA believes that if we uh, restrict the activities of mainland parallel traders, it will only cause Hong more Hong Kong people to engage in parallel trading activities, and they will bring more goods to the mainland. So the, the problem cannot be resolved um, in the short term. Well, despite this, I believe that government should still do more. For example, um, stepping up the patrolling activities, cooperate with the mainland authorities, and also uh, come up with a watch list of suspected parallel traders, and also do um, arrests and prosecutions. Well, this is only scratching the surface of the problem. If we want to go to the root of the problem, we should provide more shopping facilities for locals and mainlanders. And the CEDB said in an earlier interview that said that it supports the building of a border shopping malls to uh, enhance our capacity to receive tourists. Uh, BPA has been um, proposing that idea all along, and that can facilitate mainland shoppers to shop in Hong Kong and also ease the pressure on ho local communities. 
and also um, innovative Hong Kong brands can be put up for sale in these shopping malls, and these pro products get pro can get also promoted this way. BPA also believes that there we should um, provide more retail uh, space to tackle the root of the problem. BPA. Uh, believes that uh, any suggestions to restrict the number of visitors has to be um, dealt with uh, carefully. If we put restrictions on multiple entry endorsement, then we would be uh, giving a negative impression on Hong Kong, and that is uh, the mainlanders will feel that Hong Kong doesn't welcome them anymore. And how can we convince them that Hong Kong is still a shopper's paradise in a hospitable city? The government should discuss with the central authorities or mainland authorities to uh, open up more cities for allowing uh, for introducing IVS and also attract more quality tourists to Hong Kong. Now, for enhancement, any enhancement measures, we have to take into account the sentiments of the locals and mainland tourists. And there are many different uh, well, mainland visitors come from different backgrounds, and we should not be simplifying things. And if we take to simplistic approach, we might come up with the wrong solutions, and the sector will suffer in the end. I uh, move my amendment, and I support. Mr. Fang's uh, motion. Now, I hope that the government will build more uh, border shopping malls to um, allow mainlanders to shop, and that Hong Kong people's livelihood will not be affected. And I don't think we should um, try to separate the locals and the mainland tourists. Say, for example, if Hong Kong people go to Paris, we don't want to be get separated from people uh, Paris residents. Now, um, Hong Kong uh, mainlanders shopping in Hong Kong can benefit Hong Kong's retail industry. So we have to think carefully how to um, maintain Hong Kong's tourism sustainable development when we are cracking down on parallel uh, trade activities. And we should uh, try to maintain the jobs of the some 270,000 people in the tourism industry. I think we should have a rational discussion, and we should assess carefully the multiple entry endorsement policy and. Um, Assess carefully the impact on uh, SMEs if restrictions are going to be imposed. We should uh, work cons uh, work concertedly, and BPA believes that there should be long-term tourism planning and to enhance our capacity to receive tourists so that we can create more economic value and also meet with uh, the varying needs of tourists and attract more high-value added tourists. Mrs. Regina Yip, thank you, Mr. President. The parallel goods traders have gone crazy, and they are like a moving house uh, by uh, ants. And in fact, it has become a nuisance to the community of Hong Kong, in particular those in the uh, districts bordering uh, the mainland. And it has caught the attention of everybody when there were empty parallel traders uh, protests. And for this motion, um, 11 amendments have been moved. First of all, we need to take a clear look about the nature of parallel goods trading. Secondly, for the solutions suggested by members, like scrapping individual, um, uh, scrapping the multiple entry uh, permits, uh, limiting the number of visits per year, scaling down the individual visit scheme, imposing a land arrival tax or land departure tax, I'm afraid um, they are not sort of uh, the genuine solutions. First of all, parallel trading is part of free trade. Everybody has um, uh, traded um, in this way. In Hong Kong, we have seen this uh, going out of control. This is because of the price differential between the two places, given the, the uh, strong renminbi. And also in Hong Kong, uh, we have a good reputation. Um, in, we should be proud of uh, having a reputation for selling genuine uh, commodities. And then individual visa scheme, multiple entry permits, Our receiving capacity, law enforcement, 
regional integration, etc., have all been lumped together in this debate. First of all, under the multiple entry permit system, how many of the visitors are traders? If we likely resort to scrapping it or limiting the maximum number of trips, then it means that mainlanders will not come. But will locals resort to this sort of trading? I think、um, we saw this in the past, and it will happen again as it is happening now. So, if we do not allow mainlanders to engage in parallel trading, if our economy is in a bad shape, if the unemployment rate goes up, then many women or the jobless or underemployed people living near the boundary. Will resort to parallel trading.、Uh, Lam Quoc Hong used to say that we shouldn't suppress this activity because usually the disadvantaged are involved. And then,、um, when there is a profit, then、um, mainlanders uh, can uh, find a way to come. Now,、um, for the Shenzhen port, it's very easy. To form a group of three, you can have a tour group of three, so you can easily form a tourist group so as to come as a tour and get engaged in this kind of trading. And then uh, when uh, Anthony Leung used to be the FS when we had a fiscal deficit, a number of departments considered but dropped the idea of having a land departure tax. We can't discriminate against the mainlanders. And then, throughout our history of over a hundred years, we have never imposed any、uh, arrival tax. So I strong, I'm strongly against the idea. As Mr. Wong has said, if we are to do this, Shenzhen may also impose a similar tax on us.、Uh, we all. Believe that、uh, everybody is equal.、Uh, so if we impose a arrival tax, others will also impose the same against us. As to the opening up of Shatou Kok, I think it's just for the short term for expediency. I don't think it can effectively divert the tourists. Mr. Vincent Fang has also said that perhaps、uh, mainlanders and Hong Kong uh, citizens uh, should be separated, but I don't think it's feasible. Now there is a suggestion to build a shopping mall near the boundary, or there should be a place for distributing the parallel uh, uh, goods near Shatou Kong. I think it's a matter of policy. Policy. Do we want to do more business in relation to parallel goods trading or not?、Uh, do we want to reduce the nuisance? If we are to expand the scope. Of parallel goods trading, whether we do it in Shatou Kong in Lokma Chow, does it mean that it is the same as、um, expanding the parallel goods trading? For those who hate the parallel、uh, traders, is it good? And is it good for the long-term development of Hong Kong? For parallel goods trading, it is a low-value added activity. Now it,、um, we have a good reputation.、Um, And there is a price differential, so this comparative advantage won't last long. As Mr. Andrew Leung and Mr. Yu Si Wing have pointed out, for our tourism industry, in fact, it is going down a downward trend. Whether it's the retail industry or the hotel industry, we can see that the figures are coming down. Yesterday, the SMP had a very good article、uh, analyzing the expenditure pattern of the mainlanders. For the mainlanders, they do move up the ladder gradually. When I was young, I first visited Guangzhou and then Singapore and then、uh, the UK and Europe, etc. Now, for the middle class of the mainland, they like to、uh, buy their own air tickets on the internet. When they become rich, they would like to go directly to the advanced economies. In fact, according to the SMP. Hong Kong is attractive to the mainlanders on one point only: shopping. Just 11.6 percent of the mainlanders would like to come to Hong Kong, and in fact, the second most popular、uh, city to the mainlanders 
was Paris, followed by Bangkok. If we are to do more to drive them away or discourage them, um, I think we are already at the peak, and the problem will go away naturally. And in fact, I've been told that for mainland um, netizens. There is a very popular article saying that Hong Kong doesn't deserve uh, your visit, and in fact, um, five million hits have been accumulated, and then there were over nine thousand comments, and it's been um, um, transmitted or shared uh, by twenty-four thousand netizens. Is the society that opposed to? This phenomenon, I think, we've only got the minority. There is the localists who are generating a debate on the internet, and they encourage their peer netizens to label the shops. They organize a protest protest route. They mobilize others to follow suit. But are there really that many citizens that are? Turning a blind eye to the consequences and try to protest against the mainlanders, I don't think that many are getting so irrational. I want to say that, in fact, yesterday, last year, I already proposed to the government that, on the one hand, the government must have a multi-pronged, long-term approach for tourism, other than. Uh, being attractive as a shopper's paradise, there must be other attractions so that mainlanders don't come here just to buy the uh, goods in parallel trading. Secondly, for in IVS and for multiple entry endorsement, we should use big data to help us to analyze, and we should send the information over the internet so that mainlanders can go to different places instead of getting over-concentrated. And thirdly, instead of having temporary shopping malls at the border, we should make good use of the platform. We I have been approached many times by an organization in uh, Guangzhou. They have got a bonded um, store, and in fact, we can have a uh, cross-boundary uh, e-platform for the trading. And in this way, we can build up a new logistics network. There will be many business opportunities for our SMEs, and our goods don't just uh, not just um, to be sold to Guangzhou. Uh, they can be sold to uh, places as far away as Ningxia. Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, Mr. Deputy, I have listened to Mr. Vincent Feng and other. Uh, members' uh, speeches. Uh, Mr. Vincent Fang's motion and uh, the amenders talked about enforcement action against para traders, enforcement actions um, against anti uh, para trading activities, development of tourism, and public transport and our retail industry. Uh, some of the uh, proposals are not uh, under my portfolio. However, I will listen to members' uh, speeches very carefully and. Uh, also, uh, speeches to come, and then I will make a consolidated reply, and then I will relay uh, your comments uh, to the relevant policy bureaus as appropriate uh, regarding uh, the impact on our P uh, on the community. The tourism industry accounts for five percent of our GDP, employing two hundred seventy thousand employees. In twenty fourteen, the number of visitors to Hong Kong reached sixty million. Up 12 percent compared with the previous year, and uh, the growth in consumption was over 9 percent, over 350 billion dollars. The tourism industry is an important pillar industry in Hong Kong. Of course, we attach a lot of significance to the long-term healthy development of this sector. We do understand that uh, the community. 
uh, has concerns about the uh, increasing number of visitors and the impacts to Hong Kong. We also respect their uh, right to express uh, their views. However, we cannot uh, put up with violence affecting people's uh, lives and also public order. On the 29th of my, uh, a few days ago, the Secretary of Security responds to uh, such protests uh, said that protesters uh, hold insults, uh, uh, passersby kick them, uh, force open their luggage. Uh, they have abused their freedom of expression. This has uh, their focus step line, and we must uh, seriously condemn such behavior. The tourism industry in general is of the view that anti pearl trading activities have dampened visitors are decide to visit Hong Kong and seriously um, tarnish our image as a tourist destination and they're worried that should such protests continue um visitors may be deterred from visiting Hong Kong affecting the uh, livelihood of tourist guys in Hong Kong some say that uh, <coughs> Southeast Asian uh, people are not so willing to visit Hong Kong. Some tourist agencies mainly receiving such tourists said that in February, uh, the number of visitors dropped by 20 to 30 percent compared to the same period last year. And uh, the association also received inquiries from Southeast Asian countries expressing concern for anti parallel traders' activities. Uh, for the hotel industry, some uh, hotels said that in between February and March there was a drop of 20 to 30 percent in occupancy rate of rooms. And for guest houses, well, uh, the uh, the main patronage drop by 50 to 60 percent, and most of them are mainlanders. For the retail industry, some uh, uh, some people of the sector said that uh, the drop started in late last year because of anti parallel training activities. Uh, the um, uh, number of visitors further drop in February and March, and if the situation continues, they may have to freeze salaries, uh, freeze uh, recruitment, and even close down some outlets. And therefore, frontline employees will be uh, the ha will be hearted. Uh, regarding uh, the government's uh, anti parallel trading uh, enforcement action, we understand the nuisance to people's daily lives and we attach a lot of significance to that. The enforcement agencies have done a lot to improve the uh, order of our railway system and our boundary points. The MTRC has uh, cooperated with our enforcement action. They have taken a number of measures to uh, control the size of luggage and a weight carried uh, by visitors to increase transport support to allow visitors to enjoy the different parts of Hong Kong so that they will not uh, concentrate in traditional tourist attractions. According to a 2013 survey on Hong Kong's uh, reception cap capacity, we're now very proactively enhancing our receiving capacity, including the expansion of the two theme parks and uh, also promote the development of uh, well, cruise industry so that uh, people can have access to a variety of experiences. We will adopt a multi-pronged approach to increase the supply of hotel rooms. We will keep a very close eye on various aspects of Hong Kong, including the number of visitors to Hong Kong, uh, the uh, conditions of various uh, industries covering uh, the retail, the catering, uh, the hospitality industries and also the uh, receiving capacity of different districts in Hong Kong. We do appreciate that councillors and members of the public are very concerned about uh, the progress of work when it comes to fine-tuning the IVS because these measures involve the um, immigration policies of the uh, mainland. We have fully reflected the views of different sectors of Hong Kong to the main authorities and to tell them our latest situation, including the number of visitors in Hong Kong, our overall receiving capacity, so as to uh, benefit our long-term interest. Uh, for the rest of the time, I listen very careful to members' motions, and I will give a consolidated reply and relay members' views to relevant policy bureaus after this uh, debate. However, I'd like to take this opportunity to respond to what Dr. Kwokaki said. Um, but then Mr. Kwok is not here. Dr. Kwok
Pokaki uh, focused uh, or targeted at the family uh, situation of uh, the chief executive, and he uh, dragged that into uh, this motion of uh, balancing the impacts of the tourism industry on the economy and people of Hong Kong. He uh, would not even um, uh, leave uh, the CE family members' health alone. I think this is uncalled for. He has um, um, uh, belittled himself, and I think this is a rather uh, cheap shot. I invite uh, Dr. Kwok to reflect on these. Thank you. Dr. Elizabeth Kwok, Mr. President. Hong Kong has all along been branded as a shopper's paradise and a world-class shopping city, so we have re recording high numbers of tourists. And tourism-related industries have prospered. I'm afraid that our strengths will be diminishing very soon. Um, the anti-parallel goods traders demonstrations have spread to Hong Kong, Causeway Bay, the resort tourists are beaten up and they have been hurt in South. And these violent acts have um, undermined Hong Kong's reputations. Tourists feel that they are unwelcome. Will they come again? Continue to come. Tourism is a polar industry and supports um, 240,000 employees. If we chase away our tourists, it will affect um, the various industries in Hong Kong. And Hong Kong people at the end are to suffer. There are anti parallel traders, demonstrators, uh, demonstrations, they try every means to chase away the tourists, and th this is very intolerable. We're disgusted and infuriated by such acts. The demonstrators will hold insults at uh, pharmacies, they storm in shops, and the shops have to close down. And the, um, they will uh, hurl physical and um, verbal abuse at uh, mainland tourists, and some are um, scolding um, a mother and her daughter. I condemn strongly the acts of the demonstrators, and they br they're bringing shame on Hong Kong people. They seem to be demonstrating against the parallel uh, traders, but then they are really uh, there to great conflicts between mainlanders and local Hong Kong people. I strongly urge the police to enforce law stringently, and we would not let them off. Such demonstrations are affecting the economy of Hong Kong. In the past two months, there has been a drop of 32 percent of um, group tours from China. Some retail shops said that there has been a drop in their business from 30 to 50 percent, and some shops are facing closure very soon. And at the same time, the number of tourists going to Macau is increasing. So tourists come not come here in Hong Kong, not because of economic reasons. And also, the U.S. dollar is strong, and the uh, euro and Japanese dollar has um, uh, depreciated, and they have attracted a large number of tourists. If we don't do anything, then we will enter a doldrum in our tourism industry, and many people's livelihood will be affected. The Pan Democrats, after the Chin Moon uh, demonstrations, held a press conference in a high profile manner uh, condemning the demonstrators uh, for their violent acts. And Mr. Gary Fan said that uh, who are they are uh, people who have. Uh, hold insults, so the wrong people should apologize. Well, I want to ask Mr. Fan, should we um, scold anyone, uh, any mainlanders who are living in, who are in Hong Kong? And if, say, the mother and the daughter is buying daily necessities and bring them to back to the mainland, um, should they be scolded? I think uh, Mr. Fan's remarks are encouraging people to use violence. And Ms. Mo said that these anti-parallel uh, traders, um, demonstrators, have nothing to do with them. And she has perhaps forgotten that um, they have established this group in 2013, uh, targeting at individual groups and trying to create conflicts among uh, between mainlanders and local people. And thereafter, we have uh, the occupation movement. And um, there are demonstrators who disregard the law. And we started with um, occupation of roads, and the acts got more and more violent. And pan-democrats, you were part of the reason. And you have 
encouraged people to take such violent acts. Now you have said that you have nothing to do with them, and you said that it's not your responsibility. No, that that can't be the case. Mr. President, um, the parallel activities are affecting people's lives, and we should adjust our policy. But should we do it by the way of chasing away our tourists? The DAB believes that <coughs> we should impose certain restrictions on multiple entry endorsement and put a cap on the number of visits for um, day same day tourists. Uh, DAB believes that their uh, border shopping malls should be built to divert mainland tourists. Mr. Wang Tingkuang has also presented a number of suggestions of the DAB to try to strike a balance between the development of tourism and protecting people's life, livelihood. We should have a rational discussion. We should do something in the policy to minimize the impact on IVS. We should have long-term plan for developing tourism, and we should enhance our capacity to receive tourists and to attract high-end tourists. This is our long-term solution. Mr. President, people are worried that Hong Kong's tourism will be hit hard, and also people are worried about the law and order situation in Hong Kong in face of um, Occupy Central Movement and anti-parallel trading demonstrators. Some people said that the police are making um, arrests too slowly, and the judges are handing out too light a sentence. They are starting to lose their confidence in the rule of law and the foundation. The the cornerstone of a rule of law has is being undermined by our legal scholars. This is something that we have to face squarely. Uh, Hong Kong's prosperity is a result of the hard work of a few generations before us, and irrespective of your political opinion, um, you should not be resorting to violent acts. And I think everyone in Hong Kong should be a law abiding. We should. Um, be united, and we should act in a pragmatic manner, or else Hong Kong won't have a few good future. Next one, Mr. Pan Xiaoping. Acting president in Yunlong, Shan Shui, demonstrators are acting against the parallel traders. In other districts, there are actions targeted at, uh, against mainland tourists. Um, there has been a lot of discussions on that. I would like to condemn such violent acts, but then, as the saying goes, Rome was not built in one day. When we criticize the demonstrators, we have to look at the crux of the problem, or else we won't come up with the best solution. When Mr. Harry Tang was the Chief Secretary for Administration, when he attended a special in a house meeting of the LegCo, I was the um, well, the Ms. Li Fong Ying of my association asked this question, and this question goes like this: Would the government review the IVS and assess the impact of the scheme, and also the integration between Hong Kong and mainland? And Mr. Henry Tang gave a simple reply. He said, "No problem." And after that, the IVS uh, was further developed, and now 49 cities are covered under the scheme. And in Shenzhen, there is this multi-entry, multiple entry endorsement policy. A large number of people are coming to Hong Kong, and they become um, the the pillar of Hong Kong's tourism industry. But then they are creating a lot of uh, nuisance to Hong Kong people's daily lives, and these people would like to are branded as an other a wave of conflict between Hong Kong people and the mainlanders. Now there have been. Uh, many suggestions in the community for reviewing the IVS and multiple entry endorsement policies. Some people that think that Hong Kong's capacity to receive tourists has uh, gone to the limit, and there is a need to limit the number of mainland tourists to Hong Kong. This is not. Uh, Right. In January, Mr. Gregso, Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, visited Japan and he promoted Hong Kong's tourism industry. He tried to attract more Japanese tourists to come to Hong Kong. We haven't heard criticisms that uh, Hong Kong's capacity to receive tourists, tourists has gone to the limit and that Mr. Gregso should not go to Japan to attract more Japanese tourists to Hong Kong. Let's look at some statistics. In 2013, 
54 million visitors to Hong Kong last year. It's 16, um, 60 million dollars, an increase of 50, 500 uh, visitors. Mr. Grexo in an interview said that non-mainland tourists remain at 14 million people. In other words, over 75 percent of the tourists in Hong Kong come from the mainland, and the average rise, well, the the, uh, the rise uh, in tourist number is attributed mainly to mainland tourists. So we cannot say that Hong Kong's capacity to receive tourists has, um, has been come saturated. It's just that uh, the tourists are sort of um, are mainly mainland tourists. So there have been changes, drastic changes to shops because of this trend, and also Hong Kong mainlanders have a different, different living style as Hong Kong people's. So Hong Kong's people's resentment is understandable. Well, I think uh, as China opens up, there are many more tourists coming out of China. And in fact, Hong Kong and the mainland are both benefiting from the IBS. The question is how to uh, achieve an appropriate ratio. The nation and Hong Kong are benefiting from the IBS. This is a well-intentioned policy, and we are getting good results and not uh, bad results out of it. A multiple entry endorsement uh, policy um, gives uh, facilitates Shenzhen residents visit and visitors Hong, visiting Hong Kong is an extension of IBS and is also a major step for um, integrating Hong Kong and Shenzhen. And this is an overall trend. And the community can discuss how we can further promote Hong Kong Shenzhen integration and have a win win situation. We should not go back and build a high wall and, and, and shut people out of Hong Kong. Parallel um, trading activities are a natural result of the integration, and such activities are affecting people's lives, uh, daily lives as a fact. Um, Mr. Zhang Mao Jok said earlier to the media. In earlier this month, said that uh, parallel traders are bringing inconvenience to Hong Kong people and also squeezing um, businesses um, out of the market as well. Now, the parallel trading activities are harming both the mainland and Hong Kong. Hong Kong people are not against parallel trading activities. When we visit a shop, uh, to buy electrical appliances. Some people will opt for the cheaper uh, parallel goods. In fact, well, not only mainland people, but also Hong Kong people are engaged in parallel trading activities. So to Hong Kong, I think the, the, the solution should be to minimize the a nuisance caused by such activities. We should um, strengthen the cooperation between the authorities of the two places. Some uh, there has been a report that um, a, and a group has applied for TPB to set up a border shopping mall. If this plan goes ahead, then it can help minimize the nuisance, and this is a good thing, a good initiative. Mr. James Chin, Mr. Deputy. In Hong Kong, we want our policies to be comprehensive. For me, I always try to remain unbiased. Um, I am from the business sector, and uh, I used to be the chair of the Liberal Party, but it doesn't mean that I will side with um, the tourism industry. At the same time, I represent New Territories East, so my constituents will also be affected. But I won't just side with my constituents when I look at the issue. Um, I won't just 
uh, look at their inconvenience and then try to drive away the tourists. I think we need to look at the policy at different uh, levels. First of all, the economic benefits. I think the economic benefits aren't just about what Mr. Cheng has said. That is only the businessmen will gain, and uh, only the larger uh, business groups can gain. For the tourism industry, when compared with uh, IPOs of the financial services industry or the property uh, sector or the trading sector, that would benefit the rich rather than the grassroots. Now, for tourism. You don't need to be highly educated. You don't need a lot of experience, and you can easily join the industry. All over the world, many cities would like to uh, learn from Hong Kong and develop tourism. The money made will not just benefit the large conglomerates. Now, the pandemocrats are saying that for the shopping malls, the rentals have gone up, and it this only benefits the. Uh, Big corporations, but please bear in mind the basic salary as well as the commission earned by those working in the tourism industry. And in fact, the whole society has benefited because our unemployment rate is as low as 3.3 percent. Uh, land owners and large corporations uh, get the rental. They pay profit tax. They contribute towards the public coffers. So I think the tourism industry has huge economic benefits. Of course, in the year two thousand nine, when I was still the chair of the tourism board, um, other than the forty nine mainland cities, since Shenzhen is closely located um, to Hong Kong and closely related to Hong Kong, it was suggested that the Shenzhen. Residents should be allowed to come more often, so that they don't, they they didn't get um, uh, the status of just the forty ninth uh, mainland city, and it was said that uh, for the permanent residents in Shenzhen, there were two point five million of them, and one point five million of them um, have got the endorsements nowadays. Now, for the multiple entry endorsements, I think just three hundred to four hundred thousand of them come often. For the rest, there is the remaining one million of them. They don't come to Hong Kong many times a day. Of course, we've looked at the latest figures. For the day trippers, there were twenty eight thousand in the year twenty fourteen, vis a vis nineteen million for those who spend a night. Um, among them, uh, fifteen million. Have come from Shenzhen, so we need to um, look at this uh, seriously, because we have got about ten million who are day trippers who don't spend a night here, and they may be involved in uh, peril goods trading. So we should target at the figure of ten million. Uh, we should tr drive down this figure. Now, for the Liberal Party members who went to the uh, to Beijing, we have asked for ten trips, being made the maximum number of uh, trips allowed for an entry visa or entry permit. Of course, some may only come for a few times a, a year, while others may come a number of times a day. So maybe uh, once per month uh, would. Um, this please, Shenzhen. They may think that it's too few. I think、um, we need to talk to Shenzhen, our neighbor. We shouldn't just um, um, try to bar the Shenzhen、uh, citizens from Hong Kong. That would strain our relationship. I hope Shenzhen would also be considerate, and even if they don't want ten trips per year. Uh, I think、uh, if even if they come once a day, there will be 365 trips in total per person. That would still be a huge number. And then for Vincent Fang's idea of having a border、uh, shopping mall, we didn't conceive such an idea when I was the chair of the tourism board. That's because we hoped tourists would go around to spend money so that they won't just focus in one single area.、Um, 
uh, making one place to prosper only. Now things have changed ten years down the road, so uh, we have to tackle the problem of the so-called parallel goods traders who focus on daily necessities. Now, when the quality rather than the price of the goods sold in the mainland is not up to standard, then um, we still have to deal with this problem because the mainlanders are worried about the quality of the goods they buy and they're worried that they're fake goods. So even when we set up a shopping mall near the boundary, we will still expect it to, um, uh, to last for quite a period of time. Now for diversion, I don't think it is not as um, Claudio Mo has thought. Diversion means diverting the perilous traders to the border uh, shopping mall for the genuine travelers who come from Shanghai, Beijing. Uh, they're encouraged to come to different places in Hong Kong, like the Central or Causeway Bay, to do their shopping. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey Lam. Thank you, Mr. Deputy. Recently, we have heard that parallel goods traders have brought many problems uh, to us. Some have blamed it on individual visa scheme as well as the multiple entry endorsement. Some have even asked for the scrapping of the two schemes. Two schemes. Indeed, uh, in some areas, the livelihood and the living um, uh, habits of many people have been affected. We need to take on the take take it um, seriously, but we mustn't allow radical ideas to confuse us. There are radicals who are not aiming at resolving the problem; they merely want to use this as an excuse so as to uh, provoke. Um, the sentiments of the mainlanders and the Hong Kong citizens. Some just want to uh, promote the idea of independence for Hong Kong, while others would just want to create chaos and unrest. So ultimately, our economy, our tourism will be harmed. Please do not forget that we have got 200,000 people live, uh, working in the tourism industry. The livelihood will be affected by such incidents. Mr. Deputy, for those who are creating trouble, for those who are politicizing the matter, they call it a matter of reclaiming the area for Hong Kong Earth. But in fact, they are stirring up trouble. They are making the tourists unhappy. They are harassing the shopkeepers. They don't care whether we are talking about mainlanders or local people. Whenever somebody is seen, uh, pulling a trolley, um, the, the suitcase will be kicked. They just want to provoke everybody. They just want to uh, divide the people. Now, Hong Kong Earths are part of China, and regarding such acts of violence, we should condemn them. Mr. Deputy, for such people, they are saying that the question of parallel goods trading can give them a reason to stir up trouble. They have been waving the British Hong Kong flag. They have been asking the mainlanders to go back to the mainland. They have forgotten that Hong Kong is part of China. There are slogans saying that Hong Kong should become an independent state. If you don't call it independent thoughts, what is it? They are really asking for Hong Kong to become independent. Now, we are Chinese nationals. We must not allow such um, topics to be used as an excuse. And they have also resorted to violence. And they are disturbing the order of Hong Kong. They are um, destroying the business environment of Hong Kong. They are tarnishing our reputation as a city of hospitality. Not just mainlanders will be turned away. Southeast Asian travelers and other visitors from the rest of the world will see such ugly scenes on the TV screen, and then they will be deterred, and no one would want to come to Hong Kong. Now, for us in the retail industries, as well as the catering industry, 
as well as the rest of the community would strongly condemn such acts. They use this as an excuse. They say that they protest against parallel trading, but in fact, they are resorting to illegal means. They are resorting to brutality. They just want to create chaos. I think the police must enforce the law and bring them to justice. Mr. Deputy, the individual visa scheme was given to us by the central authorities when we were in a doldrum and has helped with the development of our tourism industry. It is plain. Now, in the implementation of a policy, there may be problems. It is natural. But then we should target at the problem and we should try to resolve it in a peaceful way. We should avoid politicizing the topic and then scrapping the multiple entry permits would only um, cause a serious blow to our tourism industry. Tourism, retailing, catering, etc. are mainly made up of SMEs employing a large number of people. So the livelihood of the employees would depend on the arrival of tourists. Um, in March, I've met with the head of the tourism administration on the mainland. I told him about our concerns. I told him about the views of the tourism sector. I understand and I believe that they will talk to the Guangdong authority as well as the Hong Kong administration about the solutions. Mr. Deputy, all along we have benefited positively from the individual visa scheme. It should only move forward. There shouldn't be any scaling back. I think we should um, meet the demand arising from the IVS. We should enhance our infrastructural facilities and we should ease the pressure brought about by the IVS in this way. Uh, a few days ago, there was a property developer suggesting that we should build a uh, border shopping mall. I think it will be a good uh, way to resolve some of the problems that we are facing. Now, for the multiple entry uh, permits, it is said that there will be a cap on the number of visits. I think if you cap the number, Offices. It means that um, this will create a negative sentiment in the mind of the mainlanders to think that they are not welcome in Hong Kong, they are not welcome by Hong Kong. They won't agree that we are a city of hospitality and they may retaliate by imposing restrictions on us. So we have to think um, from their perspective as well. In fact, some IVS travelers just come here once and they may not want to come again in the short term. In fact, we have to think of new ways to attract more travelers. Maybe we should open up to other cities as well, like Dalian and Qingdao, so that the higher end travelers can come to Hong Kong and then we can enhance the value addedness of tourism industry. Please imagine what will happen if we lose the IVS. Consider the impact on jobs. I think we should sit down and consider a way out. We shouldn't resort to force and brutality and use that to uh, 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 deal with our visitors. Thank you. Mr. Frankie Yick, Mr. Deputy, uh, the tourism industry is one of the four pillar industries in Hong Kong. We have seen a steady growth in visitors to Hong Kong recently. In 2014, we uh, recorded a new height of uh, $60 million. Sepa, Mr. James Tan, the tourism industry has directly and indirectly led to growth in other industries such as retail, catering, and uh, logistics and transport. Uh, the constituents I belong. Mr. Lampun Lee, an economist, uh, wrote an article on the contribution by the tourism industry last year. He said that the economic contribution brought by visitors, not only um, foreign exchange, but also uh, the chain reaction and stimulation to GDP growth and economic growth. However, recently we have seen radical protests against parallel trading. Uh, this has not just caused nuisance to visitors, it has serious tarnished Hong Kong's image as an international city and uh, 
tourism destinations. Some visitors have been deterred from visiting Hong Kong's mainland visitors, together with the visitors from overseas, from other places, have dropped markedly. And I think our retail outlets are not so busy as uh, they were in the past. And if this trend should continue, this will bring negative impacts to our economy and employment situation. Of course, the police should step up enforcement action against these troublemakers. And as said by Mr. Vincent Feng, the government should, as soon as possible, improve tourism-related facilities. Because of the tremendous contribution by tourism industry, neighboring cities are developing their tourism industry very rapidly so that they can have a share in the profit. Hong Kong uh, is uh, known as a shopper's paradise and a gourmet's paradise, and therefore we must enhance our competitiveness enhance, uh, so that we can enhance our receiving capacity. We should not turn away our visitors, and we should not uh, just give up or surrender our position as a tourism hub. Recently, uh, because of global um, economic uh, downturn, uh, the um, focus, the economic focus, have shifted to the east. Mainlanders uh, now have higher consumption power. All countries over the world regard mainland visitors as a new impetus to economic growth. <coughs> they all want to have a share in this um, in this uh, prosperous business, and they have relaxed visa requirements for mainlanders. In 2003, we started to benefit from the IVS scheme because of uh, special care given to us by the mining authorities, and our economy was able to rebound very rapidly from doldrums. It's been more than a decade, and our mainland cities are covered have increased to 49. In 2009, there was a further relaxation. Our residents uh, with a household registration in Shamchen can come to Hong Kong under multi-entry endorsements so that the share increased from less than 10% to close to 70% now. They account for 77% of the visitors uh, to Hong Kong. However, uh, the growth, uh, the number of days they stay, and also the average consumption have recently dropped. So it is clear that our attraction to mainland visitors is uh, declining. The LP has said to the government a number of times that we should have new tourist attractions. For instance, uh, we should have a casino-type resort on Lanta. We should have new theme parks so as to divert the ever-increasing number of visitors. And they can have also um, diversify in terms of consumption instead of uh, focusing on shopping. However, the government has not taken on board all our uh, suggestions, and uh, the pace of expansion is very slow. So we only have uh, the two theme parks, uh, Ocean Park and Disneyland in Hong Kong, whereas our competitors, Singapore, they've got uh, a casino and also a Universal Studio, which uh, our government turned down years ago. Singapore has taken a very proactive approach in developing its uh, tourism industry. It now uh, ranks number three in the world in this regard, and we are only uh, at the 37th position, lagging behind very much. Paratrade is only a very small portion of the visitors from the mainland. We should make a distinction uh, between mainland visitors and parallel traders. We should not just um, abolish uh, the multi-entry endorsement policy, but it's true that we don't have enough uh, tourism industry facilities and we've lagged behind our competitors. The government must catch up quickly and explore new attractions, and there should be a comprehensive assessment of growth in tourists so as to have long-term plans for our tourism industry so as to enhance our competitiveness and to promote economic growth and uh, reduce confrontations. Thank you. Mr. Lo Chia Yan. Uh, Dr. Fernando Joseph Madman represents the Labor Department. He has scrapped a lot of words 
edited by the tourist by the pro establishment camp, and that is incidents targeting mainland tourists have occurred recently in Hong Kong. Recently, some people have induced violence to harass tourists who appear to come from mainland local people. Such incidents have damaged Hong Kong's reputation as a shopper's paradise. Blah blah blah. So, they have. Try to shift the focus of the whole thing to uh, those uh, scuffles, and I think uh, this is also the tactic used by Greg. So he um, condemned those um, attacks against uh, parallel traders. Of course, the Labour Party doesn't support such behaviour. But the question is, the administration has shifted our attention to such conflicts so as to evade the deep-seated conflicts. They have uh, tried to uh, divert our attention away from the deep-seated conflicts. And what are they? I think we all know very clear here. It's just that we are not willing to admit to them. Siwa Halong is incapable of resolving those conflicts. The whole question of parallel trading has caused complaints and grievance from all sectors, and we all know the reasons why. Take you know, as an example, they have uh, baby formulas, shops all over the place. In the past, there were shops selling a variety of goods. Now, the whole street has got uh, baby formula shops. You know, it's busy and crowded enough. All streets in Hong Kong are busy enough. You cannot find your way through these streets. The MTL stations are overcrowded and so are our pedestrians. We only see uh, suitcases and uh, visitors going out. We want to shop but we can't. And in addition to uh, overcrowding, there is the problem of more expensive items. Why are things so more so much more expensive? Because there is a greater demand, so prices go up, rentals go up, landlords uh, make uh, windmill, and so uh, the uh, shop operators are willing uh, to pay high rents because many visitors are going up to buy their commodities. And what happened to localists? We cannot afford the high prices. Link with shopping malls. Now, they are in um, residential developments. They are meant for residents to buy daily necessities, and yet prices have gone up in these shopping malls as well. Parallel traders leading to a congestion uh, of streets, obstruction, and high prices. You will not talk about these things. You would just want to divert people's attention to these so-called um, attacks or scuffles. But the whole system has pressurized Hong Kong people. You will not face up to such matters. Si Wano is totally incompetent, and he has scored zero in this area. And he wanted to divert our attention away from his incompetence to other things. So I think you are just uh, singing a chorus. You want to help the government to shift people's attention. So the Labour Party says, do not be, uh, do not digress. Come back to the real problem. And uh, loyalists think that uh, it's because we <coughs> don't have enough facilities. So long as we have more hotels and shopping malls, the problem is resolved. But the problem is Hong Kong cannot cope anymore. The more facilities you have, the more difficult it will be for us to cope. Hong Kong is such a small place, and every year you have 60 million visitors, 40 million of them from the mainland, and over 10 million on multi entry endorsements. So you can consider the mobile population to Hong Kong of those 10 million visitors coming to Hong Kong on multi entry endorsements. You do not face up to these issues, and you just talk about facilities. This is not helpful at all to resolution of the problem. So you have to think of solutions instead of uh, talk about commercial interests and that uh, we must uh, continue to boost our tourism industry. We must have more hotels. Of course, we agree that we should have different types 
of facilities, so that people will not just be attracted to Hong Kong for shopping only, because our shopping should not be the sole attraction for visitors. Would you agree that we should have a diversified um, range of things to attract visitors? But having more attraction doesn't mean that we can uh, address the problem of limited capacity. So we have to go back to the crux of the matter. How do we view the multi-entry endorsement policy and the number of tourists are under IVS? Otherwise, there will be no end to our problems. Parallel trading is just a general term. There are issues more than parallel trading. The basic issue is too many people have come to Hong Kong to shop. They may not be parallel traders. IVS on a multi-entry endorsements come to Hong Kong shop once a week to buy their own provisions. But we call them, in general, parallel traders. <coughs> so the Labor Department submitment asks to uh, reduce uh, the number of visitors under IVS and uh, only approve applications for multi-entry endorsements for the reasons of family reunion and study alone because uh, many main residents have to come to Hong Kong to take care of their kids. And at the same time, we must reduce the number of tourists under the IVS. Some members are arrangers enough to say that we should open up more cities eligible under the IVS. So uh, reducing the number of visitors under the IVS is also another solution. Unfortunately, uh, the government is too incompetent to do this, and uh, the establishment camp members who are delegates to NPC are also useless. Mr. Frederick Phone, we find the problem intolerable. Hong Kong people find it very un unacceptable. 689 hasn't heard our views has turned a blind eye to the problems. Uh, people of Hong Kong hope that the government can um, consider reviewing the IVS and multiple entry endorsement policies. But the government has been dragging its feet. It hasn't followed up, and no corresponding measures are drawn up. The government officials have always been saying that uh, you should be um, tolerant you should uh, wait for a few more trains before you're getting on. You, t you should take um, in care of the interest of Hong Kong as a, as a whole. And 689 said Hong Kong people are arrogant before they can't become rich. And he is turning a blind lie, eye, a deaf ear to our concerns. He is not addressing the problem created by many visitors from the mainland. He and he has said uh, that any policies have to take care of the interest of the mainland. This should be a mutual relationship between mainland and Hong Kong, but then Hong Kong is made to be subservient to the mainland authorities, and the situation is worsening. And Hong Kong people are finding it intolerable, and a radical uh, actions have been undertaken, and there have been uh, confrontations. Radical actions are something that uh, Hong Kong people don't want to see. Any radical action will do will not do any good to resolving the problem. It's like putting the cart before the horse, and the six eight nine can shift the focus through such actions, and he can continue to clamp down on opposition uh, people. And he was was trying to find a scapegoat. And he um, accused uh, Gary Fan and Claudia Mo for being this, uh, the people starting all of these. He was uh, trying to start some political struggles in an open manner. And this is going against the principle of governing a modern city. So why? How come this, this is the case? This is uh, inferior uh, smearing tactics. And it doesn't cover up the incompetence of 689. And he's incompetent, incapable of reviewing IVS and multiple entry endorsement policy. Well, if we condemn the police 
um, for taking action against the anti-parallel trading demonstrators, then that um, will not do any good to the situation. If um, then, I think we should focus on um, tightening the IBS and multiple entry endorsement policy. We should look at our capacity to receive tourists. We should adopt a phased approach to restrict visitors under IVS, the number of visitors on IVS and I multiple entry endorsement. We should look at the effectiveness of our measures and see if we should uh, further take them forward. For Shenzhen residents, perhaps we should cap the number of visits um, at two or three. And also the government departments should do a better coordinating role in clamping down on parallel trading. The customs and excise should uh, do more action, and the FEHD should do more uh, in dealing with obstruction of streets. And also lands department should also do something about property owners breaching the land lease conditions. And also in terms of the number of cities um, covered on IVS, there should be a cap on the number of visitors allowed um, in Hong Kong from these cities, and we should also consider imposing a uh, land arrival tax. Uh, we have an open attitude, ADLP, on towards this motion. Whether you are a member of the uh, Democratic or Establishment camp, <coughs> uh, we should uh, make suggestions, uh, have a brainstorming ideas, and and I disagree with people who beat around the bush and we should try to ingratiate the central um, authorities. Then for people, who, the motions moved by these people, then I will uh, disagree with those. We should uh, exert pressure on 689 and sh we should uh, un not allow him to shift the focus and try to shirk his responsibility. Uh, we should uh, review the long-term development of the uh, tourism industry. Uh, we, in the past, we used it to focus on quantity over quality, and we uh, tried to rely on mainland tourists. Well, this is a, a situation um, we find intolerable now. Well, the business sector and the Hong Kong community should not rely on the mainland, on everything. And, well, we find that we are we are okay, acceptable, safe, as long as um, the central uh, authorities take care of us. I think this kind of thinking has um, evil, well, undesirable consequences. And I think the <coughs> we are relying less on our international perspective as a result, and we are not being forward-looking and doing our job properly if we do that. The society's resentment towards such uh, parallel uh, trading activities has uh, caused us to reflect upon our position. We should not be giving favor to one particular group of um, tourists, and we should not be um, turning ourselves into just one among many cities in the mainland. We should treasure our freedom. We should have an international perspective in developing our in tourist industry. Mr. Yip Kwok Hing. Mr. President, <coughs> there have been a number of activities targeting the parallel traders, the, the so-called recover movement, and it has, has turned into some bullying activities. It has undermined Hong Kong's business environment and also disrupts um, law and order situation in Hong Kong. What is most staggering is that these violent demonstrations um, have attracted a number of young students and young people. They are totally disregarding the law, and that's a consequence of the occupation movement, I believe. The politicians from the opposition party were inciting the young people, and they were distorting the views of the young people towards the rule of law, they think that civil disobedience is, um, can allow them to do anything. What is m more surprising is that after these violent acts, some opposition um, legislators held a press conference, and on the surface, they seem to be condemning the violent acts, but then they are, in effect, 
criticizing Xi Wailang and the administration, saying that, well, it was them who forced, who had uh, created all these uh, violent acts. They tried to legalize uh, such violent acts. Mr. Frederick Fong uh, was criticizing the, C, uh, the CE. He was distorting the facts. Well, this is something so clear um, to members of the public. <coughs> C. Y. Lang named recently Claudia Mo for taking the lead in inciting people to um, demonstrate against the parallel traders. And Ms. Claudia Mo said she was innocent, and she asked her C. Y. Lang to present the evidence. Ms. Mo and her allies, Mr. Gary Fan, was were continuously inciting Hong Kong people to uh, take mainland tourists to task. I think uh, the evidence was very clear. Ms. Ms. Mo and Mr. Fan were carrying our uh, suitcases in Chim Sha Choi and in, in the uh, Tokyo advertisement in a Taiwan newspaper which uh, advocated Taiwanese independence. and. They were politicizing the uh, issues of IVS and multiple entry endorsement. Well, nativism or localism doesn't necessarily mean um, there is an element of xenophobic attitude. But then if you are resenting your own compatriots uh, in doing that, then that's something very dangerous. And Claudia Mo and Fugari Fan were so happy doing that. They were trying to uh, oppose the central government, and they're trying to um, drive a wedge between the Hong Kong people and the um, central authorities. Now, IVS was introduced in two, 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 three and multiple entry endorsement in 2009. Well, way back in 2003, the um, the central authorities were implementing this uh, in response to the SARG to try to revive the uh, Hong Kong's economy in view of the SARS scare. And these two measures have done a great deal to benefit Hong Kong's economy. And But then at the same time, livelihood issues have um, been surfacing, um, roads have become congested, and uh, traffic uh, transport um, has uh, vehicles have be have become crowded, rentals have shot up, and small shops have uh, closed it down. And there are the problems of parallel trading activities. And in Yun Long Tun Moon and the North District, um, the residents there were affected most. If we take a um, rational attitude and analysis, we can't um, well um, blame totally the IPS and multiple entry endorsement. We have looked at the demographic distribution in Hong Kong since the 70s in the last century. The government has developed new towns in the new territories, and population in the new territories has soared. Hong Kong, half of the population live in the NT, according to the planning department's estimates. And there would be some 4 million people living in the NT in 2021. So transport modes will become more congested, and mainland tourists may also shop around uh, areas near the MTR stations. And also, there is another factor, and that is there is there are more people living in the narrow territories, and that's a natural consequence of urbanization. So even without IVS and multiple entry endorsement policies, as the number of people living in the NT uh, increases, um, there will be more congestion on the transport modes. Um, there will be the roads be more congested. Well, uh, after the West Island Line has been commissioned recently, the, there has been there have been a lot of uh, drastic changes in the Kennedy town. And that is uh, testifies to what I mentioned. So this is a result of our urbanization. So what we need to do is to develop more land to sort of scatter people around. So that's the solution to the problem. Um, for problems greater by IVS and multiple entry endorsement, there have been different solutions suggested. The opposition camp member said that they should, we should cancel the multiple entry endorsement policy and then restrict IVS. 
Um, I can't agree with that kind of solutions. Well, um, most parallel traders are Hong Kong people. Even if we cancel multiple entry endorsement policy, that won't do to re fix the problem. In fact, IBS and multiple entry endorsement can help Hong Kong in developing our economy, and that's also good for the long-term development of our economy. And I think what we should do is to enhance these two schemes, and we should not take a sweeping approach and cancel the schemes altogether. This is not a solution, so I speak. So meeting will be suspended now. Uh, from 9.15 to 10.45, there will be a CE's Q&A session, and the electrical will resume at 2.30 p.m. to deal with the remaining agenda items.